Captain, today we have robbed another freighter, and there is a beautiful girl on it, are you interested? Said a small pirate in a luxurious room to a pirate dressed in captain's clothes, wearing an eye patch, and holding an iron hook in his left hand. Oh, what country? asked Fujeka with some interest. It's a Chinese descent. The little man said. Chinese? Good, very good, it's been a while since I've played Chinese, send her to my room, I'm interested in her, Fuyeka said. Yes, Captain. The little pirate nodded excitedly, and then prepared to make arrangements for Fujeka. Wait, you give me a picture of her first, let me see if she's beautiful, after all, your kid's aesthetic vision is very problematic, if it's an ugly ghost when it comes to my room, it's a flying appetite. Fujeka suddenly stopped the little young man. Yes, Captain. The little young man nodded, and said with a smile. I already knew that the captain didn't believe me, no, I was ready for you, captain, you see, this is the beautiful girl's mobile phone, and there is a photo of her on it. The little man said as he handed a mobile phone to Fujeka. With the little man like this, Fujeka took the phone in his hand, and then opened it, this time, his eyes lit up, and he saw that the woman on the phone was really a beautiful girl. Her photos are all life photos. She is only about 20 years old, with a snow white complexion, a delicate face, a tall figure, and a beautiful long hair. She likes to wear dresses, white dresses, and it seems that she is like a princess who came out of a fairy tale. Yes, yes, this is quite good, you are not allowed to touch her, send me to my room, such a beautiful girl, that must be loved, 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 loved. If everybody comes to ransom her, it will be said that she jumped into the sea and died. Fujika's eyes lit up in praise. Yes, Captain, the little one knows what to do. The little pirate smiled and said, then quickly walked out of the room, and ran off to make arrangements. Soon, the little pirate was carrying a beautiful girl in a long white dress, like a fairy tale, towards the place where Fujika was. When Fujika saw the real person, he was extremely happy, and praised the little young man. And when Fujika praised the little young man, Han Fei at this time also found the place where Fuyeka was, and then walked towards this place, and then drove up a sniper on the top of a certain hill in the villa where Fuyeka was, preparing to snipe Fuyeka to death. As long as he sniped Fuyeka, he also came to Somalia for a mission this time. And as he set up the sniper, and then opened the situation of the villa, almost in the moment he observed, his pupils shrank suddenly. Why is she here? Han Fei whispered in shock and a storm suddenly surged in his heart at this moment. According to the scope, he clearly saw the beautiful girl in the white dress standing in front of Fuyeka at the small young man in the villa, which he knew. No, because it should be said that he knew him in this life. I still remember when Han Fei first crossed into this world three years ago, when he would leave the imperial capital to travel, the main reason was because of the beautiful girl in the white dress in front of him. This beautiful girl in a white dress is named Lang Yanren. It is the daughter of Han Fei's father, Han Shaoshan's comrade in arms, and the daughter of Lang Aofeng, the chief of the Imperial Capital Police Station. Since she was almost bullied by Han Fei three years ago, Lang Yanren went abroad to study, and she only went home once during the New Year's holidays, but why did she suddenly appear here now? Although Han Fei was very puzzled, Lang Yanren couldn't help it. This thing is troublesome. If I make a disturbance here alone, it is not difficult to get out of it, but if I want to bring Lang Yanren back, then I have to do a big job. Han Fei's mind turned. And just when he turned his thoughts, he saw that in the villa, at this time, there was a sudden reversal of the situation. Lang Yanren, who was pointed at by the little pirate, suddenly made a lightning move, pinched the little young man's hand, twisted it hard, and the other party's gun was in her hand, and almost in the moment when the gun reached her hand, she quickly shot killing everyone else in the room, and then aimed the gun at Fujeka. Huh? Han Fei saw this situation through the scope, and there was a hint of surprise in his eyes, but he was relieved immediately after. Three years ago, he knew that Lang Yanren was not a weak woman. Although she doesn't seem to eat fireworks in the world, like a princess who came out of a fairy tale, their Lang family is also a martial arts family, and they also practice national arts. The national art practiced by their Lang family is Taijiquan. If it weren't for the Han Fei medication three years ago, he would not have had a chance to almost bully Lang Yanren. Who are you? Seeing such an unexpected situation in the room, Fuyeka said to Lang Yanren in a deep voice in English, and when she said this, 
She looked at Lang Yanran's eyes very badly, and there was obviously murderous intent surging in her eyes. Lang Yanran. A gentle voice came out of Lang Yanran's mouth. You're trying to kill me, said Fujeka. I don't want to kill you, I just want to get out of here, and if you cooperate with me next, I promise I won't kill you, Lang Yanran said. You can't do without Somalia, it's not the first time we've taken hostages in Somalia, but we've never been able to leave on our own, Fuyeka sneered. Do you want to die? Lang Yanran's good-looking willow eyebrows frowned subconsciously. Okay, I'll cooperate with you. Fuyeka's face changed, and then he sighed, as he was like this. Lang Yanran's mood subconsciously relaxed, and almost in the moment when she relaxed, she saw that Fuyeka actually took out a gun and aimed it at Lang Yanran, and was about to shoot. It's good, but it's still too tender. Han Fei, who saw the scene in front of him through the sniper scope, subconsciously shook his head. Bang! With his head shaken, he quickly pulled the trigger, and a bullet flew out of Barrett's body, breaking through the window of the villa and shooting him in the head. Such a situation suddenly made Lang Yanran stunned. Bang bang bang. Han Fei ignored Lang Yanran's stunned, and after killing Fuyega with one shot, he immediately followed him and fired again, and the sniper bullets kept shooting out, killing all the guards at the gate of the villa. In his situation, Lang Yanran also reacted quickly, put away the pistol dropped by Fuyega on the ground after his death, and even snatched some magazines from other people in the room and then walked out quickly towards the door of the villa. When she came out of the villa, she saw the corpses all over the ground, her willow eyebrows furrowed, and she didn't understand what was going on at this time. However, she was not given a chance to think about it at all, and a series of gunshots rang out. It turned out that with the sound of gunfire in the villa, many pirates could hear these sounds, and then subconsciously rushed over to this side, running to see what was going on, and as they ran over, Han Fei, who was on the top of the mountain, suddenly shot one after another and sniped them all. With such a situation, Leng Yanran looked around vigilantly, looking for the location of the sniper, and soon, she locked on the mountain where Han Fei was, but although she locked the mountain, she didn't know where the sniper was. She looked at the top of the hill and then retreated to a place, ready to leave while there was confusion. It's a good idea, but Somalia is full of pirates, and it's impossible to get out of the chaos. Han Fei who was killing the pirate, saw Lang Yanran's situation in his eyes, frowned slightly, and then shot at the place where Lang Yanran was, and suddenly hit the front of her fast advance, making Lang Yanran's pupils shrink, and she immediately flashed to the side, hiding behind an obstacle. Han Fei pursed his lips, then picked up his sniper rifle and rushed down the mountain, and soon came to the place where Lang Yanran was, and entered Lang Yanran's line of sight. When Han Fei entered Lang Yanran's line of sight, Lang Yanran's beautiful eyes suddenly shrank again. Han Fei, why are you here? Lang Yanran said incredulously, but after saying this, she glared at Han Fei, viciously, again, looking very unhappy. She hadn't forgotten that she was almost bullied by Han Fei three years ago. In order to avoid this hateful guy, they all went abroad to study. Don't say so much, come with me. Han Fei said in a deep voice, and the moment he said this, he came to Lang Yanran's side, as soon as he grabbed Lang Yanran's hand, he didn't care whether Lang Yanran was willing or not, so he took Lang Yanran's hand and retreated in one direction. The direction in which he retreated, according to the system, is currently the least pirate place. Let go of me. Lang Yanran pouted, looking unwilling to be held by Han Fei's hand, and when she said this, she tried even harder to pull her hand away trying to break free of Han Fei. Don't make a fuss. Han Fei frowned and shouted coldly at Lang Yanran, his voice was extremely fierce, and his body exuded a very, very terrifying momentum, which scared Lang Yanran at once. A pair of beautiful eyes widened, looking at Han Fei very aggrieved. Who are these people? I almost bullied myself three years ago, because he was the prince of the Han family, and her father didn't allow her to teach Han Fei a lesson so she could only avoid Han Fei to study abroad, and when I saw this guy three years later, this guy was so fierce to him again. Damn, damn it. Leng Yanran muttered in her heart, but she didn't dare to continue struggling, I don't know why, she suddenly had a very strong feeling at this moment, if she continued to be willful, she might be taught a hard lesson by Han Fei. Although in fact, Han Fei was just a waste wood in her memory, and there was no force at all. 
But this feeling is very obvious at this moment. Seeing that Lang Yanran didn't continue to struggle, Han Fei grabbed Lang Yanran's hand and ran up, under his galloping, although Lang Yanran had a martial arts foundation and was much more powerful than ordinary people, but at this moment, he couldn't keep up with Han Fei, and after running a little, he became struggling. Seeing this, Han Fei's brows furrowed again, and then he couldn't help but pick up Lang Yanran by the waist and hold her in the posture of a princess. What are you going to do? Let me go, big villain, let go of me. Being made by Han Fei like this, Lang Yanran's delicate pretty face turned red, and then shouted at Han Fei Zhao. If you don't want to die, shut up. Han Fei shouted fiercely at Lang Yanran in a cold voice, and then ran with all his might, the speed was very fast, and there was no impact at all because he was holding Lang Yanran, under his galloping, he met some pirates along the way, and these pirates quickly shot at Han Fei and Lang Yanran. Lang Yanran and Han Fei are both Chinese, plus they both have weapons in their hands, and they suddenly appeared in their Somalia, and there was a problem at first glance, plus there was a gunshot from the location of the villa, and Han Fei and Lang Yanran rushed out from that place, so they shot at Han Fei and Lang Yanran without thinking too much. Under their shooting, Han Fei quickly dodged with Lang Yanran, and said to Lang Yanran while dodging, shoot them. Oh! Lang Yanran responded, and then shot as Han Fei said. However, she shot several times, but failed to hit the target. Han Fei's speed was too fast, and Lang Yanran couldn't adapt to it. How do you practice marksmanship, it's so bad, Han Fei frowned and said. It's you're too fast, Lang Yanran said aggrievedly. Poor marksmanship is poor marksmanship, what excuse to make? Han Fiadao said noncommittally, making Lang Yanran hated with hatred. I haven't seen him for three years, and Han Fei is even more hateful. Han Fei ignored Lang Yanran's anger, after he said that Lang Yanran's marksmanship was poor, he immediately saw that Barrett had given him space in the system, and then took out a desert eagle, and when he made such movements, his running speed did not slow down. What's going on? Then how did Barrett suddenly disappear? When Han Fei put Barrett into the system space at once, the pirates who shot were stunned, not understanding what was going on, and when they were stunned, Han Fei's bullets shot at them mercilessly, shooting them all in the head. In the blink of an eye, seven pirates died at Han Fei's hands. At the same time, Han Fei quickly purchased bullets from the system and let the system automatically reload the bullets. Huh? Han Fei's situation made Lang Yanran stunned, and he also didn't understand how Barrett in Han Fei's hands suddenly turned into a desert eagle. Han Fei didn't explain to Lang Yanran, and after shooting the pirate quickly, he continued to leave with Lang Yanran from the same place. When they were like this, they saw that behind them, there would be a lot of pirates chasing after them where they were, and when they caught up, there were some who ran and some started their motorcycles and chased after Han Fei on motorcycles. HMPH. Seeing the pirates chasing behind him, Han Fei sneered, then sped up a little faster, and soon ran to an alley, and then passed in an instant, and with his pass, the pirates who were chasing him also chased up at once. Boom. But as soon as they caught up, the alley suddenly exploded, blowing up all the pirates who rushed into the alley, either directly killed or disabled. Remote controlled bombs. The reason why the alley exploded was because when Han Fei was preparing to snipe Fujika, he had already thought of a way to retreat, and secretly laid out the means in the surroundings, and the remote controlled bombs he got could be directly remotely detonated by Jinao Shaolong. The explosion behind made Lang Yanran's beautiful eyes shrink subconsciously, and then she looked at Han Fei very curiously. She didn't think that the explosion behind it was an accident, it must have something to do with Han Fei. I haven't seen him for three years, although Han Fei is also so annoying, but he has changed so much in the past three years, what has he experienced in the past three years? Judging from the speed at which he would run with his arms around him, he was very amazing, much stronger than her. In addition, Han Fei also showed good sniper skills before, even shooting at high speed, and the ability to snipe such as Barrett suddenly became invisible, all of which made Lang Yanran full of curiosity and very, very puzzled. At the same time, at the same time, many places in the town of the Gulf of Aden suddenly exploded one after another, and along with the explosion, many pirates were killed. This is also a remote-controlled bomb. 
The reason why it would be detonated at this time was that Han Fei wanted to follow the explosions in those places to attract the attention of some people, so that he could take Lang Yanren to make more decisive arrangements and deployments. A few minutes later, in a private house, Han Fei entered here with Lang Yanren. The original owner of this private house was killed by Han Fei as soon as he came to the Gulf of Aden. Han Fei, what are you bringing me here for? Why don't you hurry to the dock and then find a boat to leave? Leng Yanren said curiously to Han Fei. I haven't seen you for three years, why haven't you grown up at all? With our current situation, to rush to the dock is to throw yourself into the net. Han Fei glanced at Leng Yanren and said. What, three years ago? You're embarrassed to say three years ago. Leng Yanren pursed her lips and looked at Han Fei, very unhappy. Tell me what you're all about, didn't you study abroad? Why did you suddenly appear in Somalia? Han Fei then turned his frown and asked Leng Yanren. Aren't you here too? Leng Yanren said, Answer my words. Han Fei asked in a deep voice, his expression fierce. Just say it, what's the murder? Leng Yanren looked at Han Fei aggrievedly and then said, I did study abroad, and the reason why I appeared here is because I have been studying photography recently, and I want to take a closer picture of the situation in Somalia, so I took a cargo ship that will pass by Somalia to shoot here. Oops. Almost in the moment when Lang Yanren finished speaking, Han Fei gave Lang Yanren a blow to the pop, which made Lang Yanren burst into a headache, and then looked at Han Fei very aggrievedly, Why are you beating me? Why do you think I'm beating you? If it weren't for the fact that you're a beautiful girl, I'd really want to beat you up. You're so full that you're panicking that you come to Somalia to take pictures. It's also me who happened to have something happen to happen this time and appeared in this Somalia. Otherwise, you were waiting to be raised as a beautiful dog. Han Fei said to Lang Yanren in a deep voice. I. How did I know that this Somali pirate was really so rampant? He was kidnapped just after he arrived here. And besides, the hateful captain also lied to me. He clearly said that he paid tribute to Somali pirates every year, and Somali pirates would not hijack his freighter. Leng Yanren looked at Han Fiadao pitifully. HMPH. Han Fei snorted coldly, if the pirates are trustworthy, the sows will go up the tree, and besides, you are a big beautiful girl running around, no matter what, it is too dangerous. If I were a pirate, I would have given you to the state as soon as possible. It's not like you haven't tied. Leng Yanren pouted and looked at Han Fei. I really don't know how I let you run away three years ago, but I couldn't completely kill you. Hearing Leng Yanren's words, Han Fei slapped his forehead with his hand and said. What do you mean? Leng Yanren looked at Han Fei angrily. Are you invisibly saying that I'm stupid? Aren't you stupid? Three years ago I asked you to drink water, and you drank it, and then I was immediately fascinated by me, if it wasn't for the fact that I didn't want to confuse you at the time but was going to take possession of you when you were sober. You thought you could really have escaped at that time, Han Fei said. Leng Yanren. Shameless, Leng Yanren stared at Han Fei angrily, looking like she wanted to pounce and bite Han Fei. She didn't understand how Han Fei was embarrassed to say such words. Sure enough, although Han Fei has changed and become very different from three years ago, he is still so hateful in nature. Han Fei shrugged his shoulders. Leng Yanran's anger that he didn't care about, followed by a solemn look at Leng Yanran and said, Next, if you want to live, everything is arranged by me, don't look at what you shouldn't see, don't ask what you shouldn't ask. In this case, I promise to take you home, and if you mess around, then you will die, and don't blame me. I see. Leng Yanran pouted. Han Fei nodded and started to plan. While he was planning, the killing of Fuyeka at this time also spread out in the Gulf of Aden and many pirates knew about Fuyeka's death. When the news of Fuyeka's death broke, the faces of the top brass of the Somali sailors suddenly turned very unpleasant. Outsiders dared to kill the high-ranking leaders of their Somali sailors in their Somali pirates' stronghold. This is definitely a provocation of their Somali sailors. If the outsider who killed Fuyeka is not identified, their Somali sailors will inevitably become a Somali joke, which they will never allow to see. Therefore, a large number of pirates were mobilized, and the two Koreans were searched in the Gulf of Aden in a carpet manner. Stay here, I'm going to go out. After Han Fei quickly turned his thoughts, he suddenly said to Lang Yanren. What are you going to do? Seeing Han Fei like this, Lang Yanren asked subconsciously. Don't ask what you shouldn't, 
Han Fei said in a deep voice, and then strode out of the room. Seeing Han Fei like this, Leng Yanren subconsciously pursed her mouth, what, three years ago, I still had a posture of wanting to knock me down and bully me all at once, but three years later, I started to be so fierce, big bad, big stupid. Leng Yanren muttered a few words at Han Fei's back, and then began to be on guard. With Han Fei by her side just now, she didn't feel too nervous, but when Han Fei left suddenly, she suddenly became nervous. After all, it is now in the stronghold of Somali pirates, and it is really difficult to get out of here. After Han Fei left the room, he began to use the system's radar scans to avoid some carpet searching pirates, and began to install another wave of bombs in Somalia. At the same time as planting the bomb, he also walked towards the base of the Suo soldiers. When he came here, Suo Bing had no idea that Han Fei would dare to be so bold. At this time, in the Somali base, the high ranking members of the Somali sailors were in a meeting. After Han Fei came here, he asked Ji Nao Xiao Nan to carry out a remote control explosion, detonating bombs in several places at once, and with this, it immediately attracted a lot of past, and when many people passed, Han Fei also asked Ji Nao Xiaolong to block all kinds of monitoring of the Somali Suibin base, and then took out a crossbow from the system space and killed the guards on the two guard towers silently. Then he climbed over the wall and entered the base of the Somali sailors, and then quickly walked towards the meeting place of the senior management of the Somali sailors. They couldn't shoot anything, let alone shout anything. If it was just Han Fei alone, Han Fei could have gone to the beach as soon as possible after killing Fuyeka, and then swam away from here, before he came to the Gulf of Aden, he had made preparations and docked a speedboat somewhere in the waters of the Gulf of Aden. It's still a long way from the Somali pirate base, and it takes half an hour to swim. Swimming back alone was naturally easy for Han Fei, but it would be different if he took Lang Yanren with him, so he was ready to let the leader of the Somali pirates escort him away. Under Han Fei's actions, he soon came to the place where the Somali sailors held a high level meeting, and after coming here, he quickly killed the soldiers standing guard at the door with a flying knife, and then kicked the door into the conference room. When he entered the conference room, he immediately saw a long conference table appear in Han Fei's sight, and the position of the conference table was made of more than a dozen leaders, and behind each leader were two or three militants. When Han Fei entered here, he was holding an AK-47 in his hand, and as soon as he entered, he directly opened fire and got up. Bang bang! A barrage of bullets flew out, instantly catching the Somali sailors in the conference room off guard. In just the blink of an eye, more than a dozen people were shot by Han Fei. Among them were ringleaders, as well as ordinary militants. Confused. Han Fei's abrupt attack directly confused the high-level Somali sailors in the conference room, and they all opened their eyes wide, they didn't expect such a thing to happen at all, and then some people who reacted quickly immediately hid and dodged under the conference room. Among them, some militants also fired at Han Fei. Huh. Han Fei dodged the attack with just one move, and while dodging the attack, he shot again and killed the militants who returned fire, so that the militants in the conference room did not dare to take the lead at all. As they didn't dare to come forward, Han Fei's body moved, and he jumped onto the conference table at once, and at the same time, he shot again, killing some militants. Stand up for me, and put my guns down. After Han Fei killed several militants again, he spoke in English to the others who were not yet dead. For Han Fei's words, the pirates frowned at each other, and at the same time, someone wanted to shoot Han Fei while Han Fei was speaking, but the sound of bang suddenly sounded, and the person who wanted to attack Han Fei was killed again at once. At this point, the other pirates looked at each other, then put their guns down and rose from the ground. When they stood up, their faces were not good looking. They were the leaders of the Somali sailors, but during the meeting, they were actually killed by a person, and not only did they get in, but this person also threatened more than a dozen of them with a gun, which has to be said to be a very funny thing. But although such a thing is funny, at this time they have to admit that the person in front of them is a master. Bang bang. Because, two gunshots rang out again, and I saw that two of the pirates, who were preparing to make a move, were quickly killed by Han Fei again. Who are you and what are you going to do? One of them, a strong, red-haired man with a topless body and strong muscles exposed, said to Han Fei in a deep voice. You don't need to know who, but what are you doing? Unfortunately, I'm going to tell you, you've been kidnapped, Han Fei said. 
What you're hijacking us for, the red-haired man frowned. Get out of Somalia, Han Fei said. You can't do without it, no one has ever been able to leave after we make a big fuss in Somalia. The red-haired man said coldly. Bang! As soon as the red-haired man's voice fell, Han Fei immediately pulled the trigger and killed him, causing the other pirate's pupils to shrink. What about you, do you also think it's impossible? Han Fei said indifferently. There's really no way you're going to leave, a small pirate leader replied in a cold voice. Bang! In response to this person was another bullet from Han Fei. Damn! Stop! What exactly do you want to do? If you want to leave Somalia, you better stop immediately, otherwise, you will definitely not be able to leave Somalia. A 50-year-old man spoke loudly, with a scar on his face, a red vest and an obvious gunshot wound on his arm. Bang! Without the slightest hesitation, Han Fei shot again and killed the old man. Old John. As the old man was killed, many pirates exclaimed in surprise, and then shouted. Brothers fought with him. As soon as this man finished speaking, he took out a gun from his waist and was about to shoot Han Fei. Bang bang bang. A barrage of bullets erupted from the AK-47 in Han Fei's hand, knocking the person who pulled the gun directly into a sieve. Don't tell me anything impossible, nothing is impossible in my eyes. You now have only two choices, either cooperate with me and let me leave Somalia, or let me kill you all. After Han Fei killed the people who pulled out the guns one after another, he spoke to the remaining five Somali leaders. When he said this, his eyes were full of murderous intent, which was obviously a posture that if they were disobedient, they would immediately let them follow in the footsteps of those who had come before. His words made the faces of the rest of the pirate leaders turn very pale, and at the same time, there was a certain fear in their eyes. They couldn't understand why the man in front of them shot so decisively. You need us like this, a blonde pirate with triangular eyes spoke, staring at Han Fei as he said this. Prepare me a yacht with a full tank of fuel, Han Fei said. Yes. The blonde pirate narrowed his eyes, then nodded, and sneered in his heart as he said this. No one has ever been able to break into Somalia and leave alive. The same is true of the man in front of him. Isn't it just a yacht, he can prepare it for the person in front of him, but I'm afraid that the person in front of him won't be killed at all. Then give me the order to arrange it at once, Han Fei said. I'll arrange it, the blonde leader said, pulling out a satellite phone and calling his men to arrange a yacht at the docks. He hung up the phone immediately after the arrangement, and he didn't look like a ghost. Bang! After the blonde pirate hung up the phone, Han Fei fired, and a shot directly hit the blonde leader in the head, killing him. What are you doing? Didn't Ison do everything you said? Damn! What the hell are you going to do? The remaining four pirates in the conference room looked at Han Fei with wide eyes on each other, very, very angry, and roared at Han Fei loudly. I suddenly changed my mind. Han Fei shrugged, you. The pirate leaders in the conference room all had their pupils constricted, their hands clenched into fists, and if they could kill someone, Han Fei would definitely be too dead to die. I decided to leave by gunship and have someone prepare a helicopter for me. Han Fei ignored the pirate's anger and spoke again indifferently. I can arrange it for you, another blonde pirate gritted his teeth and said to Han Fei, and then he also took out the satellite phone, arranged to arm the helicopter and hung up the phone as soon as the arrangement was completed. Is it okay now? said the blonde pirate. Well, that's good. Han Fei nodded, then quickly pulled the trigger, and the bullets shot out of the AK-47, killing the remaining pirates. After doing such a thing, Han Fei took the gun and walked towards the door. When he walked out of the door, he saw a large number of pirates with guns rushing towards his location, and these people shot at Han Fei in an instant. The reason why they came here was because the bodies of the sailors who were killed by Han Fei in the base had been discovered, and even more, coupled with the sudden sound of gunshots here, it naturally made them feel that something was wrong. Han Fei's body moved, dodging the attack, and at the same time quickly counterattacked, he was not surprised at all by such an attack. Suddenly there was a lot of gunfire, and people kept dying. At the same time, Han Fei also quickly retreated, hiding behind an obstacle, and in an instant, he threw out a flashbang, and at the same time threw away the weapon at once, and at the same time, a Gatling appeared in his hand. In the blink of an eye of Gatling's hand, 
Han Fei shot wildly, and the bullets shot out in a terrifying way, and the dense bullet spray smashed all the terrorists who were blinded into a sieve. After killing these people, Han Fei quickly left the place. Five minutes later, the arsenal of Somali sailors, Han Fei quietly came here, and this place was heavily guarded. When he came here, a doomsday golden rider, sniper rifle appeared in Han Fei's hand, and he lurked behind an obstacle and set up the sniper rifle, with a very good vision. The Doomsday Golden Rider is a reward for the system's Exterminate the Tiger Shark mission. Originally, you could get it by killing the Tiger Shark, but because there was a follow up branch line after killing the Tiger Shark, Han Fei couldn't complete the task at that time, but after he sniped Fuyega today, the task was completed, so he could already extract such a task item. Doomsday Golden Rider uses 5 rounds of .50 BMG caliber bullets, which have both the power of .50 caliber and the function of rapid bursting, and the power is very good. After briefly observing the situation in front of him through the sniper scope, Han Fei began to shoot rapidly. Bang bang bang. I saw that he quickly pulled the class, and three bullets flew out one after another, killing the three heavy machine guns at once. There is a situation. This situation made the faces of the people guarding the arsenal change drastically, and they hurriedly searched for the target, and when they found the target, Han Fei fired quickly again, killing a lurking sniper. After killing the sniper, Han Fei began to shoot again, he was now more than a thousand meters away from the arsenal, and ordinary weapons could not reach his range position at all. In addition, coupled with his extremely accurate shooting, and extremely fast headshots, he actually pressed the guards where the arsenal was located with the strength of one person, and once he came up to meet them, they would inevitably end up with headshots. In the blink of an eye, there were more than a dozen guards who didn't kill them. Uh. H. Wu. With this situation, the guards of the arsenal suddenly sounded the alarm, and suddenly, some Somali sailors who had been looking for Han Fei rushed towards the arsenal. And when the alarm was pulled, Han Fei did not have the slightest surprise, and resolutely continued to attack, killing the two terrorists who were carrying bazookas, and then rushed directly towards the location of the arsenal. When he rushed out, the guards at the arsenal suddenly spotted him, and when they found Han Fei, they were dumbfounded. As the elite sailors of the Somalia, they are all experienced in battle. Among them are sharpshooters, but Rao is like this, and it is the first time they have seen that there are snipers who are not good at lurking but rush out directly after carrying the snipers. What's to be done? Sent to death. Suddenly, they who were originally suppressed and did not dare to take their heads easily came forward one after another, and almost at the moment when they came up, Han Fei shot him at this moment and linked up his wisdom, allowing him to assist him in locking onto the target. As a smart brain, Shaolan's computing ability is definitely very powerful, so it faithfully executes the order and corrects it for Han Fei plus Han Fei's blind sniping level is not bad. Suddenly, a blind sniper feast appeared in the sight of the Somali sailors. Bang bang bang. A series of bullets kept squirting out from Han Fei's hands. And he rushed out hundreds of meters in just the blink of an eye, which had reached the range that the guards could shoot, but although they shot at Han Fei, Han Fei's speed was very fast, often in the moment when their bullets came up, he actually dodged the attack with a very fast body and at the same time of tactical evasion, the sniper in his hand seemed to be able to automatically aim, killing the pirates who were rising one by one. Shet. Where did this monster come from? How can his speed be so fast? Why doesn't he need to aim to hit us, damn? With the continuous death of the brothers around him, the remaining pirates all had their pupils constricted, and they were all very unbelievable about the situation in front of them, in the blink of an eye. Han Fei rushed to their side completely close range, less than 200 meters away from them, when they came here, they saw that the doomsday golden horse in Han Fei's hand suddenly disappeared. As soon as the doomsday golden rider disappeared, several flashbangs were thrown out by him, and at the same time as throwing out the flashbangs, Han Fei's face was quickly equipped with an anti-flash sunglasses, and at the same time, a Gatling heavy machine gun appeared in Han Fei's hand. Bang bang bang. Then Han Fei shot wildly and got up, killing all the pirates in front of him, in addition, the speed he was running was not affected at all by the appearance of Gatling, with the strength of his dark strength peak, Gatling's shaking and weight were not worth mentioning at all. Cheating. Han Fei's situation, for the Somali sailors in front of him, 
is equivalent to completely opening a super plug-in, of course, he is already open. So the Somali sailors guarding the arsenal were quickly killed. With them killed, Han Fei rushed into the arsenal, and then made several remote-controlled bombs in the system space. And put them on some munitions, after doing such a thing, Han Fei exerted his speed to the extreme, quickly rushed out of the arsenal, and after rushing out of the arsenal, he climbed onto a gunship according to the radar map scan, and started the gunship, and suddenly, he saw the gunship quickly rising into the air, and with the gunship taking off, I saw a lot of Somali sailors coming quickly below. I'll show you some fireworks. Seeing this and seeing such a situation, Han Fei made Ji Nao Shaolan detonate the bomb, and as he did this, he immediately saw the arms, boom, explode all of a sudden, and the terrifying explosion power suddenly saw those Somali sailors who rushed to the arsenal to blow up one after another. Many of them died on the spot, and even if they didn't die on the spot, the situation was very bad. And after Han Fei did such a thing, he didn't care what the situation of the Somali base was, and asked Jinao Xiaonan to shield some radar equipment in Somalia to avoid being attacked by the air, and then flew towards Lang Yanran's place in a helicopter, and when he flew there, he also asked Jinao Xiaonan to detonate some of the remote-controlled bombs he installed outside at the beginning, so as to disrupt the sight of the Somali pirates and make them tired to deal with. In a moment, Han Fei returned to the place where Lang Yanren was, and after returning here, he parked the helicopter in a place not far away, and then scanned the surroundings to make sure that there were no pirates coming, so he rushed into the house as soon as possible. When he rushed into the house, by the window, Lang Yanren was quietly hiding here, looking at the situation outside, where she was, she could clearly see Han Fei coming down from the helicopter gunship. Seeing Han Fei like this, Leng Yanren hurriedly walked towards the door, and when she arrived at the door, she immediately saw Han Fei running over. Come with me. After Han Fei came to Leng Yanren's side, he couldn't help but hold Leng Yanren in his arms again in the posture of a princess, and then rushed towards the helicopter. Although he has caused great chaos here now, if he wants to take advantage of the chaos to leave, he must also be fast, otherwise if he delays a little, he will be left here, and when the time comes, he will have to resort to the last resort. That's something he doesn't want to use lightly. The 15 CVX-2 gas bombs he had obtained from killing the owl not long ago are still lying well in his system space. It was a super powerful gas bomb that could kill 10 million people in a city. Once it is really urgent, Han Fei can completely detonate one. Moreover, in fact, Han Fei had already prepared for a long time, and he had already buried one in one of the places. The gas bomb was contained in a safe. As long as it is not detonated, there will be absolutely no problem, and he believes that no one will dig in that place in a short time. Of course, if someone really excavated it and didn't believe in the leak, then these people could only be blamed for their bad luck. After all, while there are innocent people in Somalia, most of them are damned. The pirate house is not for nothing. Nine out of ten people here are pirates. Han Fei, let go of me. I'll leave by myself. Being hugged by Han Fei like this, Lang Yanran's face turned red. Shut up. Han Fei shouted at Lang Yanran viciously. If it weren't for this beautiful girl running to this place, where would she need such trouble? I know that I will bite you, Lang Yanran said angrily, and bit Han Fei's shoulder as she spoke. Uh, why don't you hide? After Lang Yanran bit Han Fei's neck, she was stunned for a moment, and then looked up at Han Fei. It's just like what happened to you three years ago, I saved you this time, and I won't talk about anything about three years ago in the future. Han Fei said indifferently. Don't even think about it, you don't want this. Leng Yanren pouted. Then what do you want, is it possible that you are still ready to make me responsible? Although I looked at your body three years ago, I didn't eat you after all, and I didn't strip you naked at that time, so I looked at the big white legs. Han Fei looked at Leng Yanren with wide eyes. Phew, I don't want you to be responsible, rogue, silver beast, villain. Leng Yanren scolded. You don't want to, I don't want to. Han Fei pursed his lips, and took Leng Yanren to the gunship between words, and after coming here, he let Leng Yanren be the co-pilot, sat in the driver's seat, and then started the plane, and quickly lifted off, when he took off, he said to Leng Yanren, will sniping be useful? Yes. Leng Yanren said, Barrett can handle it, right? Hum. Okay, here's for you, 
C-225, 238 where you don't see it, there's a shoulder-mounted rocket soldier there, snipe him for me. Han Fei said to Leng Yanren. Yes. Leng Yanren answered loudly without hesitation, and then according to what Han Fei said, she opened the hatch and aimed towards the target that Han Fei said, almost when she was aiming, the shoulder-mounted rocket soldier opened fire, and the rockets rushed towards their location at high speed. Fortunately, when the rockets rushed up, Han Fei had already lifted the gunship into the air. Hold on. Han Fei said in a deep voice to Leng Yanren, and when he said this, he controlled the gunship to avoid the opponent's rockets at once. Ah! Leng Yanren snorted, swaying with the swing of the gunship, fortunately she has practiced martial arts since she was a child, and her horse steps are good, otherwise I am afraid that she would fall directly to the outside of the hatch. Prepare to shoot, Han Fei said to Leng Yanren again. Yes. Leng Yanren answered again, and when she answered, as Han Fei turned the helicopter, he saw Leng Yanren shoot violently. Bang! Sniper bullets flew out, only to pass by the shoulder fired rocketeer. Halo, what kind of marksmanship are you? Even if you find a pig to shoot, you can shoot more accurately than you. Can you be a little more powerful than a pig? Han Fei said to Leng Yanren speechlessly. I, aren't I nervous? Leng Yanren said with a flushed face. All right, keep shooting. He shot us, and he couldn't keep him alive, Han Fei said. Hooligans. Leng Yanren scarlet and blushed with a pretty face, and then aimed and shot again, and at the moment when the other party loaded the shell, a shot was shot, this time hitting the opponent's Hun mouth. Yay! After hitting the rocketeer, Leng Yanren cheered happily. Didn't you just hit a super obvious target, and as for being so happy, this is not even 600 meters high. Han Fei struck Leng Yanren. I want you to take care of it, Leng Yanren said. All right, sit tight, close the hatch, we're on the run, Han Fei said to Leng Yanren, and then started the plane and flew out towards the outside of the Gulf of Aden, and at the same time, he also raised the helicopter gunship, although he had asked Ji Nao Shaolong to shield some radar monitoring in the Gulf of Aden, but no one knew whether there would be any accidents, so it was necessary to ensure a safe flight altitude. With the height of the plane, Leng Yanren hurriedly closed the cabin door, and when she closed the cabin door, she saw that there were sky-high fires in many places below. Han Fei, did you make the explosion just now, what did you do just now, the explosion fluctuated so much? Leng Yanren suddenly said curiously. Didn't do anything, just blew up the arsenal of Somali sailors, Han Fei said. What, you blew up the arsenal of the Somali sailors? If I remember correctly, according to the information I have received, the Somali sailors are the largest gang of the Somali pirate group, why did you blow up their arsenal, how did you do this? Leng Yanren looked at Han Fei with wide eyes, full of curiosity about Han Fei at this moment. Remember what I said to you not long ago? Han Fei turned his head and glanced at Leng Yanren. What? Leng Yanren asked in a daze. Don't ask what you shouldn't, Han Fei said. Don't be like that. We're all comrades in arms anyway. Leng Yanren pouted, just tell me what's going on, people are really curious. After Leng Yanren gagged for a while, she followed up to coquettish Han Fei. No. Tell. Su. You. Han Fei said word by word. I'll hit you. Leng Yanren said angrily, and when she said this, she waved her pink fist at Han Fei, looking like if you dare to beat you if you don't say it. Can you beat me? Han Fei pouted disdainfully. Bite you to death. Leng Yanren pounced on Han Fei's body and bit Han Fei's neck. The two quarreled for a while, and it didn't take long for them to come to an island. Along the way, he was not pursued by any Malian pirates. Seeing this, Han Fei was relieved. Once these dared to catch up, he would really detonate CVX-2. After coming to the island, Han Fei and Leng Yanren got off the plane as soon as possible. After getting off the plane, Han Fei subconsciously glanced back at the gunship in front of him. This guy is very valuable, and it would be a shame if he left it here like this. Thereupon, Han Fei thought about it, put his hand on the gunship, and then saw that the gunship was suddenly included in the system space by him, and disappeared from Leng Yanran's sight in an instant. What? Leng Yanran's eyes widened, and her face was full of incredulity. Although Han Fei was able to suddenly change a weapon like Barrett and suddenly conjure it up, it had already made Leng Yanren very curious, 
but he didn't expect that Han Fei would be able to change such a gunship. After opening her eyes wide, Leng Yanren then walked to Han Fei's side, grabbed Han Fei's hand without saying anything, and carefully examined Han Fei's hand. What are you doing? Han Fei frowned and looked at Leng Yanren. Look at your hand, Han Fei, are you an immortal? Otherwise, how could you have such a skill? Leng Yanren said. I'm an immortal for you, if I were an immortal, I would go to great lengths to save you. Han Fei knocked Leng Yanren on the head with his hand. But if you don't, how did you get rid of the gunship, it's a gunship, Leng Yanren said. Secret, Han Fei said, raising his feet and heading towards a speedboat not far away. That's what he put in this place in the first place. Don't do this, Han Fei, just tell me, I'm really curious and curious. Leng Yanren quickly followed Han Fei and asked pitifully. Don't say it, Han Fei, no, brother Han Fei, brother Han Fei, tell me. Leng Yanren said coquettishly. Where's your temperance, older than me, you call me brother, don't you want to be so cheeky, I'm sorry, I deserve it. Bite you. Ten days later, Han Fei returned to the capital with Leng Yanren, and the two were walking out of the airport this time. Okay we can go our separate ways. After walking out of the airport, Han Fei waved his hand to Leng Yanren, signaling that everyone could go back to their respective homes to find their own mothers. Don't, Leng Yanren stepped forward and hugged Han Fei's arm at once. I said, you make a fuss like that, Leng Yanren, didn't you hate being with me the most before? Han Fei looked at Leng Yanren with wide eyes. That's because you used to be bad, although, well, you're bad now. But I found out that you're not that bad anymore, Leng Yanren said. If you continue to hold me, I'll find a place to clean it up later, believe it or not, Han Fei threatened. You dare to? Leng Yanren's face flushed, and she subconsciously wanted to let go of Han Fei, but she hugged her again. Anyway, I won't let it go, I haven't been to Uncle Han's house for a long time, I'm going to see Uncle Han and Aunt Xiao, as well as Sister Yao Yao, Leng Yanren said. Speaking of this, she said to Han Fei proudly. If you don't let me go, I will tell Uncle Han and Aunt Xiao that you were expected to bear me again. Han Fei. Pang, immediately followed by Han Fei and gave a popping millet. What are you doing? Leng Yanran's eyes widened. Let you threaten me, Han Fei pouted. Then Han Fei still took Leng Yanran home, although he was actually not afraid of Leng Yanran's threat, but just like Leng Yanran said, she had indeed not been a guest at his house for a long time, since what happened three years ago, she had not been, and before that, she often played at his house. Speaking of which, according to Han Fei's memories in this life, in fact, when he was a child, he and Leng Yanren could be regarded as childhood sweethearts, and the two had been playing together since childhood, but as they grew up, and Han Fei began to deteriorate, although there was contact, the relationship was not as good as when they were young. It wasn't until the incident happened three years ago that they almost died of old age. Uh, what's the situation with you? When Han Fei returned to the villa of the military region with Leng Yanren, Xiao Shenyu looked left and right with his eyes on Han Fei and Leng Yanren, who was holding Han Fei's arm, with a surprised expression. She didn't understand what was going on. Although Leng Yanren hasn't come to their house for three years, Xiao Shenyu still knows Leng Yanren even after three years. And it is precisely because you can still recognize it that you will be confused. Didn't this girl Yanren almost be bullied by this stinky boy in her own family three years ago? I don't understand, Xiao Xinyu really doesn't understand at all. I don't know what the hell is going on. Mom, don't worry about her, she's just cheeky to come over and have fun. Han Fei said to Xiao Xinyu. Auntie, you see Han Fei and she is expecting me. Following Han Fei's words, I saw Leng Yanren suddenly let go of his hand, and then walked quickly to Xiao Xinyu's side, hugged Xiao Xinyu's arm, and complained to Xiao Xinyu. Han Fei's eyes widened instantly, he also couldn't figure out what Leng Yanren was going to do at this time, but he knew one thing, he must be sad. No, with Leng Yanren's words, Xiao Xinyu immediately rubbed Leng Yanren's head dotingly, and then angrily scolded Han Fei, making Han Fei speechless. Ten days have passed in the blink of an eye. Since Han Fei took Leng Yanren back to the villa, in the following time, Leng Yanren often went to Han Fei's house to visit the door, as if she had suddenly returned to the relationship between her previous children. 
Every time Lang Yanren came to visit the door, she would show a smug look at Han Fei, because every time Lang Yanren came to Han's house, Han Fei's mother was very good to Lang Yanren, and Lang Yanren would use Xiao Xin Yu to bully Han Fei. Of course, Han Fei doesn't suffer a loss, if his mother is not there, he will beat Lang Yanran's farts or something. It's quite a bit of a happy enemy. In addition, in the past 10 days, Han Fei has used up all the personal competitive training he has obtained, and his strength has improved again on the original basis, completely reaching the peak of the late stage of dark energy, and half of his feet have basically stepped into the transformation of energy. It is possible to cross this step at any time and officially become a master of chemical strength. On this day, Han Fei drove a Maserati sports car on the road, he was about to go to the girl at this time, the girl made a call early in the morning and asked him to take her to play, and Han Fei would naturally meet the girl's request. Just as he was driving his car, suddenly a Porsche sports car whizzed past his car and flew past his car so fast that it almost knocked him off. Seeing such a situation, Han Fei's brows furrowed subconsciously. He shook his head and didn't look for trouble, but although he didn't look for trouble, when he saw the car in front of him, he didn't know what reason, so he slowed down, and soon Han Fei caught up with the other party and was side by side. Hey, handsome guy, are you interested in a ride? When the cars drove side by side, I saw a beautiful girl in the Porsche saying to Han Fei. This is a person wearing a pink dress, she is wearing sunglasses, she exudes a strong confidence and pride, and after she has finished speaking, she takes off her sunglasses. Not interested, Han Fei said indifferently. Handsome guy, don't be so ruthless, get to know me. My name is Yi Kunxin, just accompany me for a ride, Mine Yu said with a smile. Yi Kunxin? Han Fei frowned subconsciously, and then looked at Yi Kunxin carefully. This is the female soldier Yi Kunxin in the Fire Phoenix? Looking at Yi Kunzin's current appearance, she is still dressed as a rich girl, because she should not have gone to be a soldier yet. However, think about it, according to what Han Fei knew, the Fire Phoenix women's special squad had not yet begun to be established. Why, you've heard of me? Yi Kunxin saw Han Fei's movements, and said with a smile, smiling very sweetly. Let's go, I really don't have the heart to fly the car, Han Fei said. Do you want to look like this, handsome guy? Are you still a gentleman? You don't dare to race a car, Yi Kun said angrily. Do you want to find a place to accompany you to see if I'm a gentleman after all? Han Fei said. Yes, if you can win me. Yi Kunxin frowned, followed by a smile, and was very confident in his driving skills. So let's start here and see who gets to the gas station at the front first, Han Fei said. Okay, Yi Kunxin said, and after speaking, he said, Three, two, one, start. In the blink of an eye, Yi Kunzin's car rushed out, and when she rushed out, Han Fei also slammed the throttle to keep up, but in fact, he sped up a little, and as he did so, soon, he saw Yi Kunzin's car quickly disappear in Han Fei's sight, and when Yi Kunxin disappeared, Han Fei continued to drive without fast or slow at the beginning of the race, and then left through a ramp on a roundabout. I didn't go to the so called gas station at the front. Yi Kunxin didn't know this. She would be engrossed in driving until she drove for a while and then looked in the rearview mirror as if she didn't see Han Fei's car at all. She felt that something was wrong and suddenly slowed down and then waited slowly for Han Fei to come up, but she waited for more than half an hour, but she didn't see Han Fei appear. Abominable. In such a situation, Yi Kunxin still didn't understand that he had been tricked. The thought of being tricked like this made her feel depressed. Although she used to be able to fly a car, but she would not find a random person to fly a car. The reason why this is the case today is because she is going to be a soldier in a few days, she feels that the life of being a rich second generation is really empty, and she is ready to change her life. However, before going to the army, she also decided to indulge. But why did you encounter such a depressing thing? Han Fei didn't care about such a small episode, although Yi Kunxin was relatively beautiful, but he didn't have beautiful girls around him. Just his sister Yao Yao was very beautiful, not to mention An Ran and Lang Yanren, who had suddenly entangled himself recently. So no matter how beautiful Yi Kunxin is, if Han Fei doesn't like it, he won't touch anything. After he left from the ramp, he quickly walked towards the place where the girl was, and then came to the door of the community where the girl lived. When he came here, the girl was as always, waiting for Han Fei here. 
When she saw Han Fei's car, she smiled sweetly, then pulled the door and got into the car. As she got into the car, and after the girl fastened her seat belt, Han Fei took the girl and walked towards the Great Wall, and they were going to climb down the Great Wall today. Although as the people of the Imperial Capital, they often climb the Great Wall, but the feeling is different every time. When he arrived at the Great Wall, Han Fei parked the car in the parking lot at the bottom of the mountain, and then took the girl to start climbing the Great Wall, with a very happy smile on the girl's face all the way, and her little hand was held by Han Fei in Han Fei's hand. Sometimes she will be coquettish and let Han Fei carry her. Han Fei didn't refuse anything for the girl's coquettishness, the girl was definitely a special person in his mind. Catch the thief. Han Fei walked on the Great Wall with the girl on his back for not long ago, suddenly, someone exclaimed, with the exclamation, Han Fei suddenly stared, only to see that in front of him, a man in black was running quickly with a lady's handbag in his hand, and when he ran, his other hand was holding a dagger with a cold light. It is precisely because of this cold and shining dagger that many people have the intention to subdue this person after hearing that they can catch the thief, but they dare not act rashly for fear that they will not succeed in catching the thief and hurt themselves. For such a situation, Han Fei's eyes were cold. This stealing has been stolen to the Great Wall, but it's really bold. After Han Fei's cold light flashed, he walked forward without speed or slowness, and soon blocked the thief's way. Get out of here! After the thief saw that he was blocked in the way, he shouted at Han Fei, and while shouting, he waved the dagger in his hand as if Han Fei would immediately attack Han Fei with the dagger without getting out of the way, and as he did so, he saw Han Fei's side of his body and let go. Count you as acquaintances, the man in black said proudly, and then continued to run, but just as he continued to run, Han Fei's toes moved, and he suddenly hooked the feet of the man in black who was running quickly. And then, bang, 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 the man in black fell to the ground, and then rolled down the steps like a gourd, rolling more than a dozen steps before stopping, when he stopped, his face was covered with blood, and at the same time, the bag and the dagger that belonged to him in his hand were rolled and thrown on the steps. Boy, you wait for me. This situation made the man in black extremely angry, and he immediately wanted to take revenge on Han Fei, but when he struggled to stand up and found that his body was in great pain, he hated Han Fei and said a word, and then picked up the dagger and limped and ran, afraid that if he stayed too long he would be taken advantage of by the people around him and catch him. Hearing the words of the man in black, Han Fei's eyes narrowed, and then he closed the line. After a while, a young woman with a medium appearance came to Han Fei's side, and then thanked Han Fei, and then picked up the handbag on the ground, and after picking it up, she wanted to thank Han Fei and the girl for money, but Han Fei waved his hand and refused, and then continued to walk around with the girl. Brother Han Fei, you are so amazing. He. Dot he. The girl lay on Han Fei's back and said happily to Han Fei. If you practice the Wing Chun I taught you, you will be so powerful. Speaking of boxing, how have you been practicing lately? Is there anything you don't understand? Are you lazy or anything? Han Fei said to the girl. The girls are practicing hard, and they are not lazy. The girl quickly shook her head. Well, practice well. Han Fei praised the girl. The two played on the Great Wall for more than two hours, and then returned the same way. When they walked off the Great Wall, Han Fei took the girl to the parking lot, ready to drive away, and when he walked towards the parking lot, he saw seven or eight thugs with baseball bats or daggers in their hands, suddenly surrounding from the perimeter. When they came around, Han Fei and the girl knew each other. This person was the man in black who was hooked to the ground by Han Fei on the Great Wall two hours ago, thus falling and injuring himself. Boy, you are finally willing to roll me off the Great Wall, let's say, what are you going to do next, whether to spend money to make amends, or let me clean you up, or let this little sister next to you accompany me? The man in black and the people around him surrounded Han Fei and the girl, and said to Han Fei with a sneer. When he said this, the eyes of the man in black were full of silver evil. A pair of eyes looked straight at the girl's body, and the girl subconsciously hid behind Han Fei. Brother Fei Fei, this person's eyes are so hateful, the girl said to Lin Feng in a beautiful voice. Is this abominable? Ha ha ha, little sister, I'll let you know what's more abominable later. The man in black glanced at the girl with a wicked smile, then his eyes fell on Han Fei's body, and said to Han Fei, 
Okay boy, tell me quickly, what your choice is, whether to lose money immediately, or let me clean you up, or give me the little sister next to you to play. If you choose to lose money, then I don't want you more, you let Lao Tzu fall so badly, see if you can drive a Maserati, how can you be a rich man, a fixed price, give me 500,000 yuan, I can be magnanimous, and I will not blame you for the past. And if you choose the second one, then you'd better get down on your knees and lick the soles of my shoes right now, so maybe I can clean you up. As for the last one, quack quack, I actually like, more. With the words of the man in black, a cold light flashed in Han Fei's eyes. Boy, what are you inking, didn't you hear what our sixth brother said, the horse is a target, with a little beauty to be afraid of the great wall, you attract hatred, even if you dare to meddle in things, aren't you sincere in looking for smoke? One of the thugs yelled. I hate you rich second generation the most, pretending to be forced in front of my sister paper when it's okay, who do you think you are, dare to care about our gangsters? HMPH, I think it's better to directly let this guy choose all three conditions together, he let the sixth brother you be so miserable, how can you let him choose only one condition and forget it? That's right, we want 500,000, let him lick his shoes too, and besides, there is this little beauty, ha ha ha. It's been a long time since I've played such a beautiful little girl. If you play it, I'm sure I'll die of refreshment. A bunch of things that don't know whether to live or die, Han Fei said to the little gangsters in front of him with an indifferent expression. What? You still dare to be arrogant, you just don't know whether to live or die. Get down on my knees. With Han Fei's words, I saw that after the gangsters heard Han Fei's words, their faces became very ugly, and then they saw that two of them rushed towards Han Fei at once, waving the baseball bats in their hands to each other, about to give Han Fei a good look. Bang! Smack! Bang dang! When the two thugs rushed towards Han Fei, they saw Han Fei's body suddenly move, and one foot pierced the body of one of the thugs, and then soared into the air, and then smashed the other thug's body with a strong split causing him to kneel on the ground and spit blood from his mouth. What? This guy, this guy. No wonder you dare to be so arrogant, it turns out that you have some ability, brothers go up together, him. Dry. Seeing this, the pupils of the other thugs shrank, and then they roared out one after another, and rushed towards Han Fei. Han Fei looked at the scene in front of him with an indifferent face, and rushed towards the thugs like a flock of sheep, and with a casual stretch of his hand, he snatched the baseball bat of one of the thugs in his hand, and after snatching it in his hand, he swung the baseball bat and smashed it hard against the thugs in front of him. Bang! Smack! Ah! Oh. The roars and screams kept rang out, and in less than a minute, all the thugs were paralyzed on the ground, with a large amount of blood stained on each other's bodies, and each other's hands and feet were directly discounted by Han Fei. Do you want me to lick your shoes? Han Fei walked up to the man in black who was not beaten by him, but was also paralyzed to the ground with fright, and said lightly to him. No, don't dare, don't dare anymore, please let me go, big brother, please let me go. The man in black hurriedly shook his head, his eyes looking at Han Fei were full of fear, full of fear, and then a smell of shame came from his pants, only to see that his pants were suddenly wet. Scared to pee. The man in black was directly scared to pee. He never thought that the person he met by accident today would be so strong. If he had known that the other party was so strong, he would definitely not be numb. Don't dare, I think you're very daring, Han Fei said coldly, and then the baseball bat that he copied was smashed indiscriminately, directly hitting the man in black to the point of spitting blood, and he fainted. Seeing that the man in black fainted to death, Han Fei was not ready to let this guy go. Instead, he took out the satellite phone as soon as he could, and then dialed a number, and asked people to come here to clean up the mess and put these guys in jail to pick up soap. If ordinary people encounter such a thing, these thugs will be arrested and locked up for a period of time before they are released. But coupled with the fact that Han Fei shot so hard, he would definitely not be able to run away if he defended too much. But Han Fei is not an ordinary person, so it is destined that these guys are really kicked to the iron plate. And if Han Fei wants them to go to prison to pick up soap for a lifetime, then they will definitely not be able to run. After doing such a thing, Han Fei took the girl and left the place in the car. The girl was not afraid of this incident. With Han Fei by her side, the girl felt very safe, safe like never before.
In the evening, Han Fei returned home, and when he returned home, Jinao Shaolan suddenly took the initiative to contact Han Fei. Master, Shaolan has monitored the situation on the internet that is not favorable to the owner. Jinao Xiaonan's mechanical voice came into Han Fei's mind. What's the situation? Han Fei frowned. The reason why Ji Nao Xiao Nan would monitor the situation on the internet was because Han Fei turned on such an intelligent assistance after getting Ji Nao Xiaolan, and then Xiao Lan handled some daily affairs for him. Someone uploaded the video of the master you beating those gangsters on the internet today, with the title that the prince of the Han family arrogantly beat ordinary people, who can be the master of the people. Ji Nao Xiao Na Dao. Give me all this information to be blocked blocked and in addition to find out who is behind the scenes it is absolutely impossible for ordinary people to have the courage to do such a thing han fei's eyes narrowed and then he said to ji nao xiao nan well shaolan has begun to block such information and has already hacked all the major portals as for the driving force behind the scenes the master shaolan has also been found out ji nao xiao na dao who is behind the scenes han fei said the Huang family. It is the people of the Huang family who are secretly dealing with the master. Ji Nao Xiao Na Dao. It's the Huang family again. Very good. This Huang family is really not an ordinary death seeking. Not long ago, a Huang Xiaohu jumped out to disgust me, and now he actually started to hit my idea again. Han Fei's eyes flashed with a cold light, and then he said to Ji Nao Xiaolan Xiaolan, collect information from the Huang family's disciples for me especially any negative news for me, I want to make many of them ruined. Yes, master, replied Ji Brain Shaolan. With Ji Brain Shaolan's response, Han Fei did not continue to talk to Ji Brain Shaolan. Ji Brain Shaolan is a system product, and the level of science and technology is at least 50 years ahead of the earth, or even more. Let her collect negative information about the children of the Huang family. Han Fei knew very well that Ji Nao Shaolan would definitely be able to do it. As for those children of the Huang family, there's no need to think about it at all, it's absolutely there. Most of the rich second generation officials are not clean behind them, let alone a family like the Huang family, as long as they dig deeper. Han Fei believes that he will definitely be able to dig out a lot of things. Sure enough, in less than half an hour, Ji Nao Xiaonan told Han Fei that it had collected a lot of information and asked Han Fei if he wanted to watch it. Han Fei didn't refuse, and then browsed the information collected by Ji Brain Shaolan. At this look, Han Fei's eyes narrowed. I saw that there were a lot of videos of the Bo women, and the protagonist of the soldiers was the Huang family who was beaten by him three years ago because of an Ran's incident, and in addition, in addition to that person, there were many other people. In addition, in addition to these videos, Shaolan even collected a large amount of information on the Huang family's power and property transactions from Han Fei. The funds involved in it were shocking to Han Fei. I have to say that Ji Nao Shaolan is really powerful. In terms of intrusion capabilities, even the world's top hackers can't compare to it. After obtaining such information, Han Fei took a look, even if he didn't let the Huang family directly wash his name, it would hurt the vitality of the Huang family. In addition, this is still an ordinary upload network. Han Fei will not be just an ordinary upload network, since he wants to clean up the Huang family he will naturally beat him to death at once and completely cripple. So Han Fei made a USB flash drive, asked Ji Nao Shaolan to copy all the information into the video, and went directly to the mysterious compound the next day. After coming to the mysterious compound, Han Fei found his grandfather. At this time, his grandfather was working in the study, so when Han Fei came, he went directly to the study, although when the old man was working in the study, others were not allowed to disturb easily but Han Fei was no longer on the list. However, after Han Fei entered the study, he saw that his grandfather was busy, but he didn't bother his grandfather immediately, but found a chair to sit down, and then took a copy of Zhang Yang and read it. After waiting for almost an hour, Grandpa was busy. Little monkey, why don't you have time to come to Grandpa's place again, don't you go shopping and eat with your confidence or something? Grandpa, I've heard that you kid is very capable now, even the girl of the Lang family who was almost bullied by you three years ago took the initiative to lean towards you, how about it, do you need grandpa to be a matchmaker for you, so that you and the girl of the Lang family are directly engaged, grandpa, I have been waiting to hug my great grandson for a long time, after grandpa was done, he said to Han Fei with a smile, 
Grandpa, can you not make fun of me? Han Fei said bitterly. What's the joke? Grandpa is telling the truth, is it possible that you want to get married? If you really want to do this, it's not a problem either. After all, many people in powerful families actually have a few, alas, this is also something that cannot be avoided at all. Our Han family, although everyone else can only be monogamous, but if you are a brat, Grandpa can make an exception for you to marry a few more, Grandpa said to Han Fei with a smile. Han Fei's eyes widened. Why don't you believe Grandpa, what kind of expression is this? Grandpa said to Han Fei with a smile. No, no, I'm just curious about what you can say, Grandpa. I've heard that those second uncles wanted to marry one more back then, and you almost broke their legs, old man, and only allowed them to keep them secretly. Han Fei shook his head, and then looked at his grandfather suspiciously. Isn't it because grandpa spoils you, you kid is so special, if you don't have a few more, I'm really sorry for your ability, that strange spatial ability, maybe it will be passed on to future generations, grandpa said. Grandpa, you've been treating me like a breeding pig for a long time, Han Fei said speechlessly. Ha ha ha, I don't mean that. Grandpa smiled, but the look in his eyes at Han Fei made Han Fei still speechless. Then he no longer talked to his grandfather about such things, but said to his grandfather with a solemn face, Grandpa, I came out this time because I wanted to trouble you. What's the matter? Seeing Han Fei's solemn face, Grandpa's face suddenly turned pale and asked solemnly. Grandpa, have you heard about the beating of the thugs yesterday? Han Fei said to his grandfather. It's the prince of the Han family who arrogantly beats ordinary people. Who can be the master of the people? Grandpa's eyes narrowed. Well, it seems that you know all about Grandpa, yes, it's that report, although I was more ruthless at the time, but the guys I shot were all gangsters. According to the normal situation, even if it is exposed, it cannot be such a headline report, but yesterday it was that headline, and many portals have such reports, it is obvious that there is a behind-the-scenes driving force. Han Fei Zheng said to his grandfather. I can see this grandfather, but I haven't found out who it is, according to the investigation. The person who uploaded it is very secretive, and the report has just been uploaded, the screenshots of the major portals, the news have been removed at once, and the people I arranged have not been able to track down the investigation, Grandpa said. Those screenshots weren't taken down, they were hacked by me. According to the investigation, the Han family is behind the scenes, so I want Grandpa to let you kill the Han family, and this is not the first time they have calculated me, Han Fei said to his grandfather. By the way, Xin Yu girl is a top hacker, and as her son, it's normal for you to be able to hack. Grandpa suddenly, and then said with a straight face, but even if you know that the Huang family is behind the scenes, Grandpa can only suppress the Huang family at most, and want to end the Huang family, this is not realistic, no matter what, they are the core powerful people in the Dragon Kingdom, and there is an alliance behind them, once Grandpa does it for no reason, it will affect the stability of the Dragon Kingdom, and number one will definitely not allow me to do that. I have a large number of unpressed photos of the heirs of the Huang family, as well as some information on the power and property transactions of the core power circle of the Huang family, and I have counted the suspected funds, as high as 10 billion, Han Fei said. What? 10 billion? Grandpa's pupils shrank suddenly, and he slammed the case, looking at Han Fei with an extremely straight face. Xiao Fei, what you said is true, and its suspected funds are really as high as 10 billion. Yes, Grandpa. Han Fei nodded. How can this be true? Mods. A group of mods. Tens of billions, tens of billions. How many people are here? How dare these people? How dare they? Grandpa was furious, although he knew that many families were not in a hurry, but he was also suddenly frightened by Han Fei's explosive figures. But when you think about it, it makes sense. The Huang family is a large family, its root system radiates many areas. If the Huang family is really greedy, tens of billions is nothing, a lot of large-scale projects, as long as you need to move a little, you can get a lot. The Huang family didn't know about asterisk asterisk at this time. In the study of the Huang family, two young people who shrugged their shoulders were being disciplined next to each other. Who let the two of you do it like that? Do you know that now that we are at a critical moment, who asked you to do it in advance? If the Han family realizes that we want to deal with them, won't this disrupt my layout in advance? The head of the Huang family spoke sharply to the two young men in front of him. Grandpa, we can't be angry with Han Fei, after all, 
We have been holding back for a long time, and yesterday we finally found an opportunity to discuss Han Fei, so we couldn't help but do it. His heavenly dynasty face, a very popular looking young man, spoke. Yes, grandpa, we can't swallow this breath either, another young man spoke. Bastard, just because you can't take a breath, you want to put my Huang family into a place of no return. Even if you want to send screenshots, you shouldn't post them now, but because it won't be long before the old man of the Han family retreats from illness, you can send screenshots and make news again, only then can you completely hit the Han family, instead of attracting the attention of the Han family in vain like you are now. The head of the Huang family said loudly. Grandpa, don't worry, although the Han family will definitely be able to guess that there is a driving force behind this incident, they will definitely not guess that it is our Huang family who is doing it. After all, there are a lot of people who are worried about the number two position of the Han family, and they also have a lot of political enemies," said the young man with a national character. HMPH, the head of the Huang family snorted coldly. You know a fart, the old man of the Han family is in charge of the Seven Kills Group, the Seven Kills Group is the most elite organization in the Republic, their intelligence gathering ability is very powerful, and if there is a clue, our Huang family will inevitably be suspected. After the head of the Huang family snorted coldly, he then scolded the young man with a national character face. This, this, because it shouldn't be found, I didn't handle this matter myself, I let others do it, and in addition, the people who took pictures and uploaded them to the internet were also silenced by me, and it was impossible for the Seven Kills team to find out about my Huang family. The young man with the national character face hesitated for a moment, and then said with a positive color. Oh, it's gone? The Huang family's eyes narrowed? Hmm. The young man with the face of the national character responded. Are your hands and feet clean? said the head of the Huang family. Absolutely. The young man with the face of the national character replied again. If that's the case, then although you are wrong this time, you are still two points smart, but in the future, you are absolutely not allowed to do anything else and you must wait until the old man of the Han family is sick and retreats before you are allowed to attack the Han family. In addition, I let you please you, how have you been doing recently about the juniors of the Han family? The fish have bitten their hooks, and it won't be long before they have problems, the young man with the face of the national character said. Very well, make sure to take all the evidence for me. The head of the Huang family praised it, and then said in a deep voice. Don't worry, grandpa, we won't forget the national character face is blue. Every large family must have that loser, or super squirrel. Since the Huang family lost face one after another except for Han Fei's incident, the head of the Huang family let the juniors of his family quietly contact some of the Han family's gentlemen, show softness to them, and curry favor with them in various ways. The goal is to frame them, or drag them into the water, and then film some evidence. In this way, as long as number two is sick and retreats, then their Huang family will be the first to attack. Although it would be ugly to eat like that, who let Han always bully their Huang family, their Huang family didn't make a move, and they really thought that their Huang family was easy to bully. At that time, they will not only ruin the Han family, but at the same time, they will also take over the group founded by Han Fei's mother. The group created by Han Fei's mother has always been a piece of fat that has made countless people blush. But because the Han family is a political family, and there is still the second support, naturally no one dares to move, but once the second retires from illness, and the Han family is detained, so that the Han family is ruined, then it is definitely not a problem to take away the group created by Xiao Xinyu in his hands. The head of the Han family has a strong self-confidence, once the Han family is really ruined, then there will definitely be many people who fall into the ground. Although the Han family also has allies, it can't stand up to many enemies. Politics has always been like this, every time a person ascends to power, or after he falls into power, there will inevitably be a series of things. I don't know how many people have planted it in the past. Zhongnan, hi, Han Fei's grandfather's study, at this time grandpa was on a tablet, looking at the information provided by Han Fei, when he looked at the shocking information inside, his face was very ugly and his right hand subconsciously clenched into a fist. Many of these projects were actually tricked by the Huang family. Tens of billions of bridges across rivers, highways. Construction of some development zones. 
Every point that fell into the eyes of the grandfather made the grandfather eager to immediately take out a gun and kill the Han family and kill all the people involved in the Han family. Han Fei, I order you to lead people to the Huang family, arrest everyone in the Huang family directly, and kill anyone who resists. I'm going to see number one this time, and I must uproot this Huang family. After watching the video for a while, Grandpa slapped the table with his hand and said loudly. Uh, I'm going to arrest someone? Han Fei was stunned for a moment. Why don't you dare go? Grandpa frowned. How can it be? I just don't want to be high profile. Grandpa, look, let's find someone from scratch, Han Fei said. You found the information, and you provided the information. Let you go, you will go, okay, I'm going to see number one right away. Grandpa said to Han Fei, and as he spoke, he walked towards the outside of the study, looking like the matter was settled. Grandpa, aren't you chasing ducks to the shelves? Han Fei was speechless, but the cold light in his eyes flashed closely. He really doesn't have a good impression of the Huang family. With his grandfather's order, he followed Han Fei directly to the police station, and then found Lang Yanran's father. Although he didn't need to come here in person at all, he could use the authority of his Seven Kills Group squadron leader to mobilize people, but he felt that this time it was better to let Leng Yanran's father, Leng Aofeng, interfere. Han Fei, how could you remember me here? However, you came just in time. I heard Yanran's girl say a few days ago, it was you who saved her in Somalia. I was ready to thank you as soon as I heard about it, but I was stopped by the girl. She said that you didn't want others to know about it, so I didn't go. You won't blame Uncle Leng. After coming to the police station, Han Fei found Leng Aofeng in the director's office. Leng Aofeng is a tall man with a very good personality and looks cool. Of course not. Uncle Leng, you are my father's comrade in arms, and in addition, Yanren Nanizi has been my playmate since childhood, and I should save her because of this, Han Fei said. Well, that's right, after all, you almost bullied Yanren three years ago. Leng Aofeng nodded. That. Han Fei instantly became embarrassed. Uncle Leng, I came to you this time because I need your cooperation. After Han Fei was embarrassed for a moment, he then took out a document and handed it to Leng Aofeng. Leng Aofeng took the certificate, then opened the document, and as soon as he opened his pupils, he shrank, and then a touch of surprise appeared on his face. Captain of the Seven Kills Group. Xiao Fei, your hidden identity is amazing. No wonder you were able to save the girl in Somalia. Leng Aofeng said to Han Fei with a smile, and handed the document to Han Fei as he spoke. I don't know how you need me to cooperate. Leng Aofeng smiled and handed the document to Han Fei, then looked at Han Fei solemnly and said. I have collected a lot of criminal evidence from the Huang family this time, and my grandfather has already gone to see the number one chief, let me mobilize people to control everyone in the Huang family first, I need your help, Uncle Leng, Han Fei said. Control the Huang family? Leng Aofeng's pupils shrank, and then he said to Han Fei solemnly, Are you really going to do something to the Huang family? Why didn't you hear any wind at the beginning? This is also an improvisation. Grandpa's order to me was to arrest everyone in the Huang family, and if anyone resisted, they would be killed on the spot, and if Uncle Leng didn't believe it, he could immediately call his grandfather and his old man, Han Fei said. This. Got it. Leng Aofeng's pupils shrank again, and then said loudly. The power of the Seven Kills group is very large, and since Han Fei has said so, Leng Aofeng naturally won't shirk anything. He was just shocked, a sensation of the incident. Huang Jockey is a large politician the root system is spread over several provinces, and now it is suddenly an opponent, and it has also issued an order to kill on the spot if it resists. How much of a mistake did the Huang family make? It can make the second leader angry. Then Uncle Leng, next I need you to mobilize the special police and armed police you can trust to arrest everyone in the Huang family, Han Fei said. Yes, replied Leng Aofeng. A high-end club, this will be the descendants of the Huang family, Huang Urshan, is talking with several powerful children, and the big star next to him is snuggled up to him, letting him rub and oil. When many people talked to Huang Urshan, they had awe in their eyes. Huang Urshan is the more powerful descendant among the heirs of the Huang family, and he can mobilize a lot of strength of the Huang family, so to speak, if Huang Urshan wants to rectify a person, it is very easy. Ordinary chief, director, he can easily use the power of the Huang family to get him out of class. 
Because of this reason, many people who are not as powerful as the Huang family, and when their descendants get along with Huang Urshan, they are all talking to Huang Urshan, and they dare not have any other thoughts. And just when Huang Urshan was talking loudly, so that the other people in the room were looking at him in a hurry, the people in the private room of the clubhouse were suddenly kicked away by external forces, and with the kicking, a large number of special police officers with guns actually entered from the outside. Hands up! After these gun-wielding special police officers entered the private room, they pointed their guns at everyone in the room, and such a battle suddenly confused everyone, and they didn't know what this situation was. Which brigade are you from? Who let you come? Presumptuous, do you know who I am? Just a little stunned, and then saw a touch of evil in Huang Urshan's eyes, and shouted at the special police officers who rushed in with a gloomy face. I know who you are, you are Huang Urshan, we are arresting you, Huang Urshan has committed your matter, come with us immediately. The special police officer who took the lead said in a deep voice. I committed a crime. Funny, what evidence do you have to show that I committed a crime? Besides, don't say that I didn't commit a crime, even if I did commit a crime. I still know for the first time that the special police officers are also involved in ordinary criminal arrests, and, what about the arrest warrant, do you have an arrest warrant? Huang Urshan sneered at the special police officer who took the lead and said, if you don't want me to rip off your dogskin, you'd better tell me right away who told you to catch me, and who wants to deal with me behind my back, and if you're good enough, I can keep your shit. What Tian Shao said is not wrong, who are you who called to deal with Tian Shao, you don't look at what Tian Shao's identity is, can you easily bully him, don't you hurry up and get out of me. One of the sons and brothers, his eyes moved, and then he immediately stood up from his position, loyal to Huang Urshan, and loudly scolded the special police. Idiot. The response was the butt of one of the SWAT officer's guns, which knocked him unconscious. Take them all with me, ordered the SWAT officer. Yes. Other SWAT officers responded. The order they received this time was to arrest all members of the Huang family, and if anyone resisted, they would be killed on the spot. Although they did not understand how such an order could suddenly be given, they all faithfully carried out the order. Similar to the situation of Huang Urshan, this day happened one after another. When Han Fei got his grandfather's order to arrest everyone in the Huang family, and contacted Lang Aofeng again, a series of arrests quickly began, and every heir of the Huang family was arrested as soon as possible. For a while, many people were frightened. They all had doubts, and they didn't understand what the situation was, why the people of the Huang family were arrested all of a sudden. The speed of such an arrest was too fast, and it didn't give some of the Huang family's allies a chance to rescue at all and the Huang family was directly served in one pot, including the head of the Huang family. When some of the Huang family's allies were shocked and tried to rescue the Huang family, the intelligence feedback they received was that the seven killings team handled the case. All right. When they got this kind of feedback, they all died down. At the same time as the flag died down, some forces that were implicated in the Huang family also immediately began to dissociate themselves. Anyone who knows about the Seven Kills group is very clear about the nature of the Seven Killings. This organization is equivalent to the Minister of the Ancient Chincha, and it is equivalent to the Killing God holding the sword of Shang Fang. But there is the right to cut first and then play. Once the Seven Killings group is mobilized, and it is still such a large-scale arrest, there is only one possibility, the Huang family's affairs have been committed, and it is still a major event. Otherwise, even if the rights of the Seven Kills group are good, ordinary members of the Seven Kills group would never want to control the Huang family like this. It will inevitably be impeached and stopped as soon as possible. But now that the Huang family has been served in a pot, they haven't even made the slightest bad sound. Then there is only one possibility. Chiefs number two and number one acquiesced in such a thing. And in fact, of course, when Han Fei's grandfather gave an order to Han Fei, Number two went to see number one, and then showed the information to number one, and there was no room for relaxation in the slightest. Corruption reaches tens of billions. This is tens of billions, although they are very clear that some large political families are not clean, but when such a shocking number appears in front of them, whether it is number two or number one, some are angry. So the Huang family was finished. However, once such a thing spreads, the whole country will be shaken, and of course the tens of billions of figures will not be exposed, and it will be super shrunk to such an extent. And then, when the Huang family was uprooted, 
it was only said that it was suspected of trading power and property, and the transaction amount reached tens of millions. Although this number has shrunk many times, other political families have also understood why the Huang family was planted. As a result, those forces involved with the Huang family were even more panicked, afraid of implicating themselves as well. Han Fei didn't pay any attention to the follow-up matter of arresting the members of the Huang family, after he arrested all the people of the Huang family according to his grandfather's order, he then left the imperial capital, a place of right and wrong, and ran to Donghai City. This time, although the Huang family's affairs are for ordinary people, they definitely don't understand what the situation is. But for those families with power, as long as they are given time, they can see that it is the Han family who has done it to the Huang family, and Han Fei, the person who did it this time, is naturally impossible to hide it. In order not to absorb the firepower so much, Han Fei naturally had to keep a low profile. This year, the tree is very popular. Although he has a system and his strength is also awesome, there are more awesome people in the world, and Han Fei doesn't want to be roasted on the cusp of the wind and knife all of a sudden. Speaking of which, Han Fei hasn't been to college a few times since he graduated from high school. Although he has experienced a lot of things during this time, in fact, he now has an identity in addition to the identity of the leader of the Seven Kills group. That's a student at Southeast University, and Lin Xiaoxiao and He Changguang in the same school. It's just that since he was admitted to Southeast University, he hasn't actually gone to class once, and the only time he came to Southeast University was not long ago when he came here to beat Wang Yudong. And this time, the affairs of the Huang family were so big, in order to stay away from the circle of right and wrong, Han Fei immediately ran to the school and started to fight soy sauce. Play with He Changguang and Lin Xiaoxiao every day, play, play CS, play and masturbate. Or look at the long legs, leg silk, and socks in the school, and chat with the senior sister or something. Han Fei's little life was very good. On this day, Han Fei, He Changguang and Lin Xiaoxiao were riding in a military Humvee together, it was the morning rush hour, and they were heading towards Southeast University at this time. The person driving was Han Fei, the co-pilot was Lin Xiaoxiao, and He Changguang was sitting behind Han Fei's position. The three of them talked and laughed along the way, and they were in a very good mood. And it seemed that they were in such a good mood, when they drove over an overpass, and then got off the bridge, they saw that the cars in front of them suddenly collided together, although Han Fei reacted very quickly, hit the steering wheel for the first time, and dodged the attack and impact, but the car behind still collided, so a series of cars collided together. Fortunately, the quality of the military Humvee is very good, and Han Fei and the others were not injured in anything. However, although they were not injured, when such a thing happened all of a sudden, Han Fei and the others also understood that going to school or something was a delay. Xiao Xiao, you and Cheng Wang stay in the car first, don't move, I'll go down and have a look first. Seeing such a thing, Han Fei immediately said to Lin Xiao Xiao and Yi Cheng Wang, now that there is a series of collisions, it will be dangerous for ordinary people to get out of the car rashly. However, Han Fei was confident in his strength, so he didn't worry about anything when he got out of the car. I saw him open the sunroof, and then a bullet shot out, stepped on the roof of the car, and when he got out of here, he quickly looked around. Ding, the system task is released, please help Shen Hongfei, change the scene of Shen Hongfei watching his master being shot, the task is completed, reward the host with a bottle of primary gene potion, and a personal competitive training. The prompt of the system suddenly came into Han Fei's mind. Shen Hongfei's SWAT force? Han Fei's pupils shrank. Yes, the host is Shen Hongfei of the SWAT force, the system replied to Han Fei. In other words, I only need to give Shen Hongfei a gun to complete the task, Han Fei said. Theoretically, that's what it looks like, but specifically, it depends on the host's play, the system said. Hearing this, Han Fei's eyes moved, and then he didn't continue to talk to the system, but turned on the system radar scanning map and scanned Shen Hongfei's location. As the radar map scanned, Han Fei found that Shen Hongfei was not at the scene of the car accident at this moment. He was quickly driving towards the scene of the car accident with his master. And that was when Shen Hongfei and his master drove towards the scene of the car accident. At the location of a traffic light, there was a person in a car here, and suddenly three people got out of a car next to him and attacked him. The three men were all wearing black hoods, 
and they all held MX-1014 military-equipped shotguns in their hands. The man who was attacked had a bald head and was wearing a floral shirt, and his name was Jin Chang. Stand, police, don't move, put down the gun for me. When Jin Chang was attacked by three terrorists with guns, in a Volkswagen car behind him, a criminal policeman suddenly got out of the ground, pulled out his gun, and shouted at the three terrorists. As he did this, he saw that the three terrorists were startled, and then they all shot at the criminal policeman, whose name was Zheng Ji. He has been monitoring Jin Chang lately. In the face of the terrorists shooting, Zheng Ji's pupils shrank, and he immediately dodged behind his car, snatching the shot of the three terrorists, and when he dodged the shooting of the terrorists, he saw Jin Chang, who was attacked at the beginning, take advantage of the chaos to start the car, and then run away. Chase. Get in the car. Seeing Jin Chang fleeing, the three terrorists were stunned, then returned to their cars at the same time, and then quickly chased after Jin Chang's car. As the three terrorists drove towards Jin Chang, Zheng Ji's face changed greatly, and he quickly ran towards the zebra crossing, locked the direction they were driving, and then passed the communicator on the placket, and called out to the team members. Chow Chow Chow, I'm a Dalmatian, there was a shooting on Zhongshan Street, yes, the gunman chased Jin Chang and he has gone in the direction of the rainbow bridge. Chow Chow received, please pay attention to protect the public, I will notify the special police immediately. The response of the team was heard. SWAT detachment, command, an operator suddenly answered the phone, and then said formulaically. Red alert, order the tiger commandos, dispatch immediately, came the voice of the head of the Tokai police. With such a voice, the entire Donghai police station suddenly turned to the alarm and the special police team suddenly took action, and began to equip their weapons and prepare to carry out the order. At the same time, in the direction of the Rainbow Bridge, the three gunmen kept chasing Jin Chang's car, and Jin Chang's car kept colliding on the road, trying to knock Jin Chang's car over. Faced with such a situation, Jin Chang's face turned ruthless, and then he took the initiative to control the car and hit the car driven by the gunmen. Their cars kept crashing causing some vehicles on the road to be startled and hurriedly get out of the way. You know, at this time, it is the morning rush hour, there are a lot of cars and pedestrians on the road, and now Jin Chang and the gunman are playing bumper cars on the highway like this, such a scene is definitely very dangerous, and many cars collide with other cars because they can't dodge in time, or they roll over. In the face of such a scene, Jin Chang and the terrorists did not stop, but kept advancing, and at the same time, they continued to collide with each other. At times like these, where Han Fei was, at the scene of the overpass car accident, two traffic policemen came to the scene of the accident on motorcycles. The two of them, one of them is a middle-aged uncle, and the other is a young man, although this young man is only wearing a traffic police uniform, but it gives people a very unusual feeling, his eyes are very sharp, and he is not a simple role at first glance, and he must have some special experience before this. Seeing the appearance of these two people, Han Fei, who was standing on the roof of the Humvee, moved his eyes, and then walked towards the two of them. According to the map scan, among the two traffic policemen, the young one is the target of his mission this time, Shen Hongfei. Finally, the middle-aged uncle is the traffic policeman who will be shot in the story, and it is also Shen Hongfei's current traffic police master. When Han Fei walked towards Shen Hongfei and the middle-aged uncle, he saw the two of them quickly dealing with the traffic accident. The registration, the evacuation of the evacuation, the contact 120 immediately contact 120, in this case, the road that was originally blocked, quickly sorted out a road, so that many vehicles that have been now on the road can pass. And when the two traffic police did this, not far from the overpass came the sound of violent tire rubbing and rubbing the ground, and with the sound coming, I saw a black Audi car, which was running forward non-stop, and behind him, a black Volkswagen sedan was rapidly pursuing. In the process of pursuit, suddenly one of the windows of the car was opened, and then a terrorist with a black hood and a weapon stretched out of the window, half of his body, and fired a shot at the Audi car driven by Jin Chang in front of him, which hit the wheels of the Audi car steadily, causing its tires to burst all of a sudden, and as Jin Chang's driving speed was too fast, it suddenly rolled over. However, I don't know if Jin Chang's life is big, after the car rolled over, it rolled over several times in succession, and then stopped firmly on the ground. When such a scene appeared, 
Some people who were originally in the surrounding area to make notes screamed one after another, and then quickly dispersed around. At the same time, I saw that Jin Chang shook his dizzy head a few times, and then saw Shen Hongfei and the middle-aged police uncle who were making notes, and then pushed open the door and rushed towards the location where Shen Hongfei and the two were located. As Jin Chang did this, the terrorists immediately got out of the car and then caught up with Jin Chang at gunpoint. Police, save me, they have guns, they want to kill me, Jin Chang said loudly while rushing towards the place where Shen Hongfei and the two were, and when he spoke, he quickly let go of the railing, and at the same time, Shen Hongfei's master also greeted Jin Chang, and in addition, one of the terrorists was also holding a gun and preparing to shoot. It seems that with the current situation, if there are no other exceptions, the middle-aged police uncle will inevitably be shot instantly. At this moment, Han Fei, who was walking towards Shen Hongfei and the middle-aged police uncle, suddenly moved, and at that critical moment, a flying knife was thrown out, and it was suddenly inserted into the hand of the terrorist who was about to shoot, so that his shooting action was suddenly forcibly stopped by the pain, and with his stop, Shen Hongfei also reacted at this moment, and quickly rushed towards Jin Chang's place. Shen Hongfei of the Wolf Tooth Special Operations Brigade, take the gun. Seeing Shen Hongfei rushing up, Han Fei suddenly threw a police gun at Shen Hongfei. As he did this, he saw Shen Hongfei's body shocked, and then subconsciously took the pistol. And almost at the moment when he took the gun, he saw the other two of the three terrorists, who were about to shoot Han Fei and the middle-aged police uncle. Bang bang. So, Shen Hongfei's pupils shrank, and then he shot. Two bullets hit the hands of the two terrorists who were about to shoot at the same time, preventing them from continuing to shoot. Hurry up, get out of here. With all three terrorists wounded, the three terrorists were immediately startled and ran towards the car on the side. Leave them, Shen Hongfei. Han Fei shouted when he saw this, and with his shouting, Shen Hongfei shot again, and three bullets shot out, hitting the legs of the three terrorists respectively, causing them all to fall to their knees at once. And almost when the terrorist was injured and knelt on the ground, Zheng Ji, who was tracking the three terrorists and Jin Chang all the way, also drove to the scene at this moment, and after coming to the scene, he immediately got off the field, and then pulled out his pistol, and the police didn't move. At the same time, the alarm sounded, and I saw a high-end car, which also drove to the scene, and after the car came to the scene, the leader was a young woman in disguise. This person is Liu Yao, the leader of the Donghai City Serious Crime Team. The people around her are all serious cases. After they came to the scene, they all shot at each other quickly, and then caught the three major terrorists on the ground, and at the same time, someone pointed a gun at Shen Hongfei. Shen Hongfei is dressed as a traffic policeman. The traffic police have the right to no guns under normal circumstances, and they will not be equipped with pistols. But now, Shen Hongfei has a gun in his hand, and it seems that Shen Hongfei shot it, which naturally has to be paid attention to by Liu Yao and others. When they paid attention, Han Fei ignored the large number of serious crime team members next to him, walked towards Shen Hongfei, and then stretched out his hand to Shen Hongfei. Shen Hongfei, return the gun to me. Who are you? Why do you have a gun? Shen Hongfei's pupils shrank, and instead of giving the gun to Han Fei immediately, he asked Han Fei with a straight face. How long have you been transferred from the Wolf Tooth Special Operations Brigade? Han Fei asked without answering. Shen Hongfei's pupils shrank again, and then he looked Han Fei up and down carefully, he knew very well that he had not seen Han Fei before, but why was the person in front of him who knew him and knew him from the Wolf Tooth Special Operations Brigade? If you've only recently been demobilized, then I think you've heard my name, my name is Han Fei. Han Fei didn't care about Shen Hongfei's color change, and spoke again indifferently. It's you, that Han Fei who smashed the field of the Lone Wolf Special Operations Team, Shen Hongfei exclaimed. Yes, that's me. All right, now you can give me back the gun. Han Fei answered, and then stretched out his hand again. Hmm. Shen Hongfei nodded, and then handed the pistol to Han Fei. As a soldier of the Wolf Tooth Special Operations Brigade who had just changed careers, it was certainly impossible for Shen Hongfei not to have heard of Han Fei's name. Han Fei is the grandson of the commander of the Southeast Military Region the prince of the Han family, who smashed the field of the Lone Wolf Special Operations Team with the power of one person. 
To smash the lone wolf special commando team with the power of one person, such a thing is not something that ordinary people can do. Although Shen Hongfei thought that his strength was good, he couldn't do such a thing at all. Don't move. And when Shen Hongfei handed the pistol to Han Fei, Liu Yao next to him suddenly led the two people towards the location of Han Fei and Shen Hongfei, and then said loudly to Han Fei. Seeing that she was ready to knock out Han Fei's action of taking the gun at once. In the face of her blow, Han Fei didn't look back, continued to take the gun handed over by Shen Hongfei with one hand, and stretched out towards the place where Liu Yao attacked without looking at the other, and actually blocked Liu Yao's leg at once, however, as soon as he blocked Liu Yao's attack, he saw that Liu Yao used the leg that was in contact with Han Fei as the support force, his body rotated, and the other leg, another blow and kicked, attacking towards Han Fei. Han Fei's face remained unchanged, and he put the gun on his trousers, seemingly putting the gun in his trouser pocket, but in fact, he put it into the system space all of a sudden, and while doing such things, his left hand stretched out and grabbed Liu Yao's leg at once, and while grabbing it, with a slight force, Severe pain arose from Lu Yao's leg, making her exhale in pain instantly, and in addition, her body also stopped attacking with severe pain. Let go of the road leader, faced with such a situation, Zhang Ji on the side quickly ran up towards Han Fei's place, pointed a gun at Han Fei and shouted loudly, and when he shouted these words, he looked like he was going to shoot at any time. In addition, not only Zhang Ji is like this, but also the other members of the serious crime team next to him. Seeing this, Han Fei shrugged his shoulders and was about to let go, but when he was about to let go, he saw a large number of sirens sound, and as the sirens sounded, a large number of SWAT vehicles came from all directions, and at the same time, a helicopter gunship came from the sky, and as soon as the gunship arrived at the scene, many cool SWAT fighters were parachuted down from the gunship. After they landed in the air, many of them were armed with submachine guns, and one by one they quickly approached Han Fei's place. Leading the way among them is a tall man. His face is very similar to the high school team of the Lone Wolf Group B of the Wolf Tooth Special Operations Brigade. His name is Long Feihu and he is the captain of the Tiger Commando. After he quickly approached the scene, he saw Han Fei grabbing Liu Yao's leg with his hand, his complexion changed suddenly, and in the moment he rushed up, his body rose into the air, and a powerful battle axe like leg slash came towards Han Fei. It's really worthy of two people. This attack is exactly the same. Han Fei pursed his lips and let go of Liu Yao at once, and in the moment of letting go, facing Long Fei Hu's splitting leg, he actually bombarded it with a punch at the tomahawk style splitting leg. Such an attack is very unwise in the eyes of many people. Because anyone with a discerning eye can see that the power of Long Fei Hu's blow is very strong, and the ordinary fist attack goes up, only one ends, the fist is shattered, and he is broken alive. Bang! In the next second, a roar sounded, and as the roar sounded, I saw that Long Fei Hu was actually beaten upside down by Han Fei with a punch and flew out more than 10 meters away, if it weren't for the fact that there were a lot of special police officers behind him and hurriedly supported him, he would definitely fall to the ground. And even if he didn't fall to the ground now, Long Fei Hu clearly found that his leg, which was in contact with Han Fei's hand, was extremely painful at this moment, and his bones seemed to be broken. Of course, it looked like this, but in fact his bones were not cracked. It's not that Han Fei can't do that kind of thing, let alone crack Long Fei Hu's bones, even if he breaks it directly, if Han Fei wants to do it, it's all simple and easy, the reason why he didn't do it like that is just to teach Long Fei Hu a lesson and show mercy to his subordinates. Don't move. Han Fei's shot made a large number of special police officers angry, and they all pointed their guns at Han Fei one by one and everyone looked at Han Fei with extremely solemn and vigilant eyes. Long Fei Hu, as the captain of the special police team, all the members of the special police team clearly know how powerful their captain is, and they are so powerful in the team. At this moment, the surrounding special police and even the members of the serious crime team next to them were treated as the most terrifying terrorists. Faced with such a situation, Han Fei shrugged his shoulders. What are you doing? Stop it! A coquettish sound sounded, and as the coquettish sound sounded, I saw Lin Xiaoxiao running towards Han Fei from not far away, and when Lin Xiaoxiao ran over, He Chengguang also ran over from a distance, and when the two ran over, they directly flew several SWAT team members, if it wasn't for the fact that they didn't grab it, 
I am afraid that they would be attacked at the first time. Xiao Xiao, Cheng Wang, it's okay, don't mess around. Han Fei greeted Lin Xiao Xiao and Yi Cheng Wang. You'd better not move, or we'll shoot you right away, Zheng Ji said loudly to Han Fei. Lin Xiao Xiao and Yi Cheng Wang, and with his words, the people around him were all ready to fight. Arrest them for me. After Zheng Ji spoke, Liu Yao commanded the other members of the serious crime team next to him to arrest Han Fei, Lin Xiao Xiao and Yi Cheng Wang. This time, Han Fei did not resist. Because there are a large number of people in the surrounding area at this time, many people are using their mobile phones to shoot and post meager or something. Fortunately, Han Fei has Ji Nao Shaolan, and he asked Ji Nao Shaolan to block his and He Cheng Wang and Lin Xiao Xiao's images at this time, so that all the surrounding shooting equipment could not clearly take pictures of their faces. And then, Han Fei and Lin Xiao Xiao, as well as He Cheng Wang and even Shen Hong Fei, were all arrested by Liu Yao and others at the police station. The four of them were imprisoned in the same room. Shen Hongfei, seeing that your marksmanship and physical fitness are good, how did you think of being transferred to a job and demobilized, and you also ran to become a traffic policeman? Inside the detention room, Hongfei smiled and said to Shen Hongfei, My mom wants me to be steady. Shen Hongfei's eyes moved, and then he said a little lonely. Since he was a child, he listened to his father tell the stories of being a soldier and the story of resisting Japan. So he wanted to be a soldier and a special soldier since he was a child, but he finally became a soldier, but his mother felt that it was too dangerous for him to do that business, and his father was getting older and his health was getting worse and worse, so he left his most beloved post and ran to apply for the traffic police examination and became a member of the traffic police. I have to say that this is actually a very nonsense thing. He had practiced for so many years, but in the end he lost the qualification to hold a gun, and if it wasn't for Han Fei suddenly handing him a gun today, in that situation, he actually found that he was not capable of protecting his master at that time. So at this moment, he was very grateful to Han Fei. As for whether Han Fei and him will be fine, Shen Hong Fei didn't think much about it, because he knew very well that there was no need to think about anything at all about such a thing. In a moment, the four were each taken to a room for interrogation. What is your name, age, address, gender? In the interrogation room, Han Fei was detained on a chair, and Zheng Jijung asked Han Fei loudly at this time. Han Fei's hands and feet were handcuffed, and there were several policemen with guns in the room. Judging from the situation of these people, they really treated Han Fei as the most terrifying and dangerous person. My name is Han Fei, I am 18 years old, gender, male. As for the address, he currently lives at number 001 of the compound of the Southeast Military Region his hometown, and the Imperial Capital Military Region. Number 001 of the Southeast Military Region Compound, the Imperial Capital Military Region Compound. When Han Fei said his name, Zheng Ji frowned, and subconsciously felt that this address was very familiar, and his eyes widened suddenly. Number 001 of the Southeast Military Region Compound, isn't this where Commander He of the Southeast Military Region lives, and as for the Imperial Capital Military Region Compound, this is also a remarkable place. In addition, Zheng Jiji thought of Han Fei's name. Surname Han. You are the prince of the Han family? Zheng Jiji thought of Han Fei's identity and subconsciously exclaimed. Someone calls me that, Han Fei said indifferently. Pretending, forced, pretending, forced, this is really too pretending, forced. Almost as soon as he heard Han Fei's admission, Zheng Ji's heart trembled, and his eyelids fluttered rapidly. This time it's a big deal. The crown prince of the Han family. How could this be a terrorist? Well, I'll go out first. Zheng Ji said to the other policemen in the room, and then quickly ran out of the interrogation room. As Zheng Ji left, the other policemen, looking at Han Fei at this time, were also full of jealousy. This is the prince of the Han family. If things are not handled properly, then it can be said that everyone who stays in the interrogation room at this time is bound to suffer. After all, they were close to torture Han Fei to confess. Fortunately, they hadn't started to torture Han Fei to extract a confession, otherwise, once they started to do something to Han Fei, and Han Fei revealed his identity, then they would really be finished. While being afraid, someone quietly took out their mobile phones, and then searched for Han Fei's information. If Han Fei was really the crown prince of the Han family, 
he would definitely be able to search for news about him. After this search, they immediately found that the pictures they searched for were really exactly the same as Han Fei, and the person in front of them was really the prince of the Han family. So you look at me, I look at you, and I don't know what to do. After Zhang Ji ran out of the interrogation room, he immediately went to another interrogation room, which was the interrogation room where Lu Yao was. And Lu Yao was really interrogating Lin Xiaoxiao at this time. Team leader, something big has happened. Zheng Ji came to the side and said quietly to Lu Yao. What's wrong? Lu Yao was stunned. There was no progress in Li Kei, in addition to saying that she was Lin Xiaoxiao and her home address, there was also a gun about Han Fei. The person I interrogated is called Fei, and he is the prince of the Han family, Zheng Zidao. What? The prince of the Han family? Which prince of the Han family, wait and so on, are you talking about the prince of the Han family in the imperial capital? Lu Yao was stunned for a moment, and then was shocked. Well, that's him. Zheng Zidao. This. Lu Yao suddenly felt a headache, how did the prince of the Han family get involved in this matter, and the key is that now they all treat Han Fei as a terrifying criminal. So she didn't care about continuing to interrogate Lin Xiaoxiao, so she walked out of the interrogation room with Zheng Ji and then came to the interrogation room where Han Fei was. When she came here, she saw that Han Fei's hands, feet, and leg cuffs had been taken off by the police in the room. If Han Fei was really the prince of the Han family, they couldn't afford to continue to treat Han Fei like this. Seeing this situation, Lu Yao frowned slightly, but he didn't say anything. Han Fei, you are really the prince of the Han family, Lu Yao said to Han Fei. It seems like yes. Han Fei said. Team leader, we just checked on the internet, it's him. Someone quietly walked to Lu Yao's side and whispered. Lu Yao's pupils shrank. Han Fei doesn't matter if you are the prince of the Han family or not, I need your honest cooperation, why did you take out the gun, and why did you give the gun to Shen Hongfei? Lu Yao asked Han Fei in a deep voice, looking like he would not give up on this, and he looked like he would take Han Fei even if his identity was against the sky. Although Lu Yao was jealous of Han Fei's identity, she actually didn't have a good impression of Han Fei's second generation officials. If she could, she wouldn't mind taking Han Fei down. Han Fei casually took out a document from his pocket and threw it on the table. Seeing this, Lu Yao quickly took it, and when she let go of the certificate, she saw that it was written on it by Han Fei, a special commissioner of the State Aid Bureau. Seeing this, Lu Yao immediately carefully checked the steel seal on it, and even directly called the phone above to inquire about the situation, but as soon as the phone called, she was instantly asked to match the password. Where did she know what the password was, so she naturally hung up as soon as possible. And almost when she hung up, a certain department of Imperial Capital A was running quickly, and then in less than a minute, Lu Yao's mobile phone rang, and the person who called was Mr. Wen of the Southeast Provincial Public Security Department and asked her to release the person immediately, and then the director of the East China Sea Police, Shi Chong or something, called one after another, asking Lu Yao what he was doing, and asked her to let people go immediately. There are a lot, and as soon as they came up, they directly criticized Lu Yao. After Lu Yao received these calls, he was directly dumbfounded. Looked at Han Fei in a daze, his face was very unsightly. You have such an identity, why didn't you take out your documents earlier? Lu Yao looked at Han Fei indifferently and said, looking like a teacher asking for guilt. Do you have time for me to take out my documents? As soon as I came up, you directly pointed a gun at me, and then quickly arrested me like a terrorist. Besides, there were so many people just now, in that situation, how do you let me take it? Don't you know the confidentiality regulations? Han Fei looked at Lu Yao indifferently and said, when he said this, he stood up directly from his position and then walked to Lu Yao's side and took the document in his hand. This time, for your official sake, forget it, but the next time you arrest someone, please don't be too impatient, after all, think about it, apart from the fact that you attacked me at that time and I defended myself, have I done anything other radical? Han Fei said a word, and then strode out of the room. Lu Yao watched Han Fei leave in a daze, his hands clenched subconsciously, only to feel that such a thing was very aggrieved. By the way, can you please let my friends out? When Lu Yao felt aggrieved, Han Fei, who strode out of the door, suddenly walked back and turned his head to Lu Yao and said, Lu Yao. A moment later, 
Han Fei walked out of the Donghai City Police Station with Lin Xiaoxiao, He Chengguang and Shen Hongfei. After walking out of the Supervision Bureau, Han Fei said to Shen Hongfei suddenly, Do you have any arrangements for the future? What do you mean? Shen Hongfei looked at Han Fei puzzled. Are you going to continue to be a traffic policeman? Han Fei said. I. Shen Hongfei opened his mouth, If you don't want to be a traffic police officer in the future, you can call me and I'll arrange a place for you. Han Fei said to Shen Hongfei, and then reported his phone number to Shen Hongfei, and didn't care whether Shen Hongfei remembered it or not, so he didn't say anything more. Then took Lin Xiaoxiao and He Chengguang to invite Shen Hongfei to dinner. Regarding Han Fei's invitation, Shen Hongfei did not refuse anything. Donghai City Police Station, Zhang Jijung looked at Liu Yao with a puzzled expression at this time. Team leader, what is the situation? Why did you just release Han Fei's little book after reading him? Zhang Ji was very, very curious about such a thing at this moment. Don't ask what you shouldn't, Liu Yao said angrily, and then walked out of the door. Zhang Ji touched his nose with his hand when he saw this. Then he began to go to the three terrorists who attacked Jin Chang with guns, and in addition, he also went to the hospital to see Jin Chang. Although this guy was not shot, he was also injured during the pursuit. Today's events can definitely be described as big events. There was a shootout during the morning rush hour. And there are also thrilling cars, crashes. This made people who encountered such things during the morning rush hour couldn't help but post a meager post, and with the release of their Weibo, the shooting and murder incident in Donghai City suddenly received high attention from the upper echelons. When such a thing is highly concerned, the pressure on the Donghai City Police Station naturally increases. If such a thing cannot be handled properly, it will be absolutely impossible. So everybody is on standby. As for the next situation of the Donghai City Police Station, Fei didn't pay attention to anything. After he had a meal with Shen Hongfei, he followed him over again to his carefree college life. Everything and all disputes seemed to have nothing to do with him, as if they were completely away from him. Six days later, Han Fei rode a bright bicycle alone. He would be enjoying life comfortably, without bringing Lin Xiaoxiao or letting He Chengguang follow. He rode the bicycle alone, taking out his mobile phone from time to time to send messages. It was very relaxed, comfortable, and freehand. However, just as he passed through a community, Han Fei suddenly felt threatened, and immediately turned his head to the side, almost in the moment of his side head. A sniper bullet almost flew past his head, if it wasn't for his fast side, he would definitely be hit. In addition, as soon as the sniper bullets dodged at this moment, several sniper bullets followed by them attacked him again, blocking his various movement trajectories. This situation was very dangerous, making Han Fei's cold hair stand on end, a cold glint flashed in his eyes, and he exerted his body speed to the extreme, narrowly dodging the attack, and when he dodged the attack, one of the bullets suddenly turned a corner under Han Fei's shocked perception and hit his arm. When Han Fei was hit, Han Fei's face turned cold. This is the first time he has been injured since he came to this world, and the first time he has been shot like this. When his face turned cold, the radar map scan was completely activated by Han Fei, and with the activation of the radar map, Han Fei clearly found that four red dots appeared around his body. The four red dots are in different places, each of them is a sniper master, and each of their root tendrils has a foreign name. Shaolan Check the identities of these people in front of me. According to the names displayed on the radar map, Han Fei told their names to the Jinao Shaonanren, and asked it to immediately match them according to their names and face shapes. Four Musketeers. Master, according to the system matching, these four people, they are the World Killer Organization, the human level killers of the Night Temple, codenamed the Four Musketeers. Although this is only a human level killer, it has more than once killed a task that a ground level killer can do. They are very good at thermal weapons and are proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and Paul Poonin, one of the four musketeers, is also skilled in gunfighting. In addition, the killers of the Night Hall are divided into four levels. Yellow level killers, human level killers, earth level killers, and heaven level killers. Among them, the yellow level killer is the worst, and the human level is the second. However, only human level killers, among the hundred yellow level killers, there is only one possible one. Their purpose in dealing with the master is very simple, although the host uprooted the Huang family at once, but failed to really kill the Huang family, the Huang family has been caught in the net, 
and a large scale reward has been made to the master, and the damage is two billion to claim the master's head. After a while, Shaolan said to Han. How could there be a fish that slipped through the net? Didn't I ask you to collect all the information of everyone in the Huang family? Han Fei frowned. Shaolan did do what the master asked him to do, but the Huang family's fish that slipped through the net did not enter the family information, and he basically couldn't see it, so he didn't notice this aspect of the matter. Shaolan said to Han Fei. Then will you be able to lock down the location of the Huang family's fish that slipped through the net? Han Fei said to the system. Hmm, Shaolan replied to Han Fei. Lock down the fish that slipped through the net for me and monitor the whole process. Han Fei secretly ordered. 